Chapter 3181 Fighting Yin Dan 3 Can you tell that quickly? Yin Dan asked with an evil smile. Your feelings are certainly quite sensitive, but we are old friends. Therefore, you are free to guess who I am. Rocky D, Hansen said with a frown. Your feelings are very accurate, but you have only guessed it partially correct, Yin Dan said. Right now, I am Rocky D and Yin Dan. He waved his hand. The flying Yin spears returned to his hands. The spears had a demon-like flame wreathing all around them. The flames were greater than before. One spear was held in front of his chest, and one spear was pointing at Han Senator Yin. Dan looked like his eyes were on fire as he said, Come on, fight me. Let us see just how strong you are. Stop using those small tricks of yours to trick people. My heart is like the heart of a god or a demon. Even with a thousand moves, I will not slip and create a single flaw. The powers of your sword are useless to me. After that, one of the short spears in Yin Dan's hands came thrusting toward Han Senator. The short spear looked like a flying Yin. It ripped through space and disappeared. Chi. Han Sen's body retreated. The flying Yin spear went right past his cheek. It scraped the skin on his face, leaving a small red mark behind. The powers of a god spirit are very interesting, Yin Dan said with a laugh. He then took out the other short spear. Two short spears turned into flying yants. They disappeared from the zone of space around Han Senator. They were transparent. It looked like they were going to attack Hansen. Hansen frowned a little. He was good at teleporting. He might have even been a master at it. But the powers of Empty God did not solely rely on teleportation. Its powers turned bodies into nothingness. Teleporting required breaking space. It was a movement in space that allowed Hansen to predict where the flying yin spears would come out. Empty God's powers did not require someone to rip space. It was like two flying yin spears went invisible in front of Han Senator, he was unable to their presence or movement. Even if Hansen used his powers, he could still not feel the presence of the two short spears. Hansen was fighting two enemies he could not see. Until his body was it by a flying yin spear, he could not react. No matter how fast Hansen's reaction was, he was one step too late. If it was not for his body being very strong, the flying yin spears would have killed him. He would have likely had his head chopped off. The empty god powers are very interesting. Yin Dan looked at Hansen, who was continuing to be hurt by the flying yin spears. He laughed and said, It looks like you cannot do anything to deny this power. Hansen did not answer. He was still trying to feel where the flying yin spears were, but he kept failing every time. Who cares if you have powers that can break the world? Yin Dan asked. You cannot sense where the flying yin spears are. Even though you have enough power to destroy everything, you do not know where they are. Having all that power is useless. Hansen ignored him, but he was incurring more and more wounds. Is Samu going to be okay? Feng Yin Yin worriedly asked. Bauer licked her lips and replied, It is fine. My daddy just needs to figure out the empty god's powers. Otherwise, he would have killed the two yans already. Just as Bauer said, Hansen wanted to figure out the empty god's powers. Dealing with two flying yin spears was not difficult for him, but empty god power was a bit weird. It was able to prohibit him from sensing the movement of the power. If he met it again, there would be no way to counter it. Hansen had to figure out how to overcome the empty god powers. That was why he kept allowing the flying yin spears to attack him. It is no wonder this is empty god's sacrifice. Even elites like Dollar cannot do anything about it. If this keeps going on, Dollar will be killed. I do not think so. Did you not see that Dollar has only been slightly wounded? I believe he has found a way to break it. Speaking of that, Dollar is really strong, isn't he? Sacrificial items like the flying yin spears with three ultimate gene race buffs have only been able to damage his skin a bit. No matter how strong he is, it doesn't matter. Even if it takes a long time, repeatedly getting hit will eventually result in his death. He will lose. Yen Bei Fei was a bit worried. Yen Dan had combined with another creature's soul, which was forbidden. He was worried about what might happen to Yen Dan after this fight in the aftermath of his actions. Chi. There was another armor cracking noise. Han Sen's blood god dragon and combined protection scales armor was cracked by the flying Yen spears. I see it. Han Sen cared little for the injuries he had sustained. He took a deep breath. It was as if he had sorted out all of his confusion. Are you going to give up? Yin Dan saw that Hansen had stopped. He stopped dodging the flying Yin spear's attack and frowned. 
In the next second, Han Sen's hands suddenly moved. It was so fast that one could not even follow where it went. The two flying yin spears were being held in his hands. The flying yin spears buzzed in his hands. They were going to break space and leave, but Hansen held on to them tightly. The weapons were unable to break free and escape. Yin Dan clapped his hands and said, That is very powerful. You can grab the flying yin spears that contain empty god power. I must say that is very impressive. His mood did not change just because his spears were being controlled. It is a shame that grabbing them is a useless waste of your effort, Yin Dan said. Don't you know that these are God's sacrifices? Only God's spirits or God's spirit inheritors can use them. Even in your hands, they still possess what it takes to kill you. His three powers started to blaze as they became empty God powers burning all around him. The flying Yin Spear's powers exploded. A scary power made the tools escape Han Sen's hands. They were going to fly into his chest, which was very close to them. When the two spears left Han Sen's hands, they disappeared into space. He knew they were going toward his chest, but he could not feel them or see them. Blood God Dragon is a bit bad. Hansen did not move. He cast the Xian Yellow Sutra and Blood Pulse Sutra at the same time and entered break world mode. The moment his chest felt pain, Hansen's hands broke space. He suddenly grabbed the flying Yen Spears. He did not need to waste time thinking. The power in Hansen's body was greater and faster than he gave himself credit for. The direction of his body enabled him to grab the two spears while they were coming toward him. This time, Yin Dan was really shocked. This is a scary guy. Does he have a battle power that is this immense? In this universe, when it comes to the battle power of the body, you are the best. It is a shame that in this world, there is more than one way to fight. Using your body to fight is the most stupid thing. After that, Yin Dan pulled in the space around him. The rip space nine Rob Yin power turned into a bow and the demonic unicorn snake power turned into an arrow. Yin Dan pulled the bowstring as far back as he could. God light exploded as the arrow was released. It turned the arrow into a light that was soaring toward Hansen. Chapter 3182 Weakness Hansen's hands fought the flying Yin spears. He did not have any more power to endure the arrow Yin Dan had fired. When the arrow left its cradling string, it was hidden by empty power. He could not see where the arrow went. The arrow's power looked like it was touching Han Sen's body, but it wasn't actually touching him. It crushed his skin downward. It was about to puncture his skin, but Han Sen's body had already reacted. He slightly leaned to the side of the arrow. Han Sen's body was able to endure the power of the arrow. Unfortunately, his entire body's power was focused on combating the flying Yen spears. If his body was hit, it would likely break the balance he had struck. Therefore, Hansen did not opt to immediately tackle the arrow. Let's see how many times you can dodge. Yin Dan drew his bow again. The rain of arrows he fired at Hansen was something akin to a meteor shower. It was like they could block every possible angle Hansen could turn. Fo Nin Yin was very worried. She clenched her hands tightly. She put her hands atop her chest as if she was praying for Hansen's safety. Bauer was different. She looked like she didn't care at all. She just sipped on a carton of juice. Hansen did not move. He kept using his combination of Blood Pulse Sutra and Xian Yellow Sutra to put into the Flying Yen Spears. The Blood Pulse Sutra's power was blood inherited. The Xian Yellow Sutra's power could force a return to origin. The positive and negative, those two powers combined, could create a remarkable chemical reaction. The powers that could break the world were related to the Blood Pulse Sutra and Xian Yellow Sutra but they were completely different. The breaking world powers kept invading the flying yin spears. Hansen clearly felt that the flying yin spears were exhibiting some changes. Those changes made him start to feel there was some weird connection between him and the flying yin spears. It was now a very critical moment. Hansen did not have the time to take care of anything else. He let his body go and used his power to handle the flying yin spears. Hansen was quite scary when he focused on the fight, but it would have been scarier if he had not put any effort into it. His body moved amid the arrows. It was like his body had no measure of weight. Many scary, invisible arrows landed on him. They might have pushed against his body, but none of them were able to perforate him. No matter how cruel and scary that power was, it could not damage Han Senator his body's touch and reflective power was very granular in its detail. Any type of movement could react to it. The humans of the universe were all frozen. 
They used the powers of gene races to fight, so they had never seen anything like this before. The fact that he was able to push his self-battle power to this level was frightening. After this fight, many humans started to focus on self-battle power practice. Although they might never reach Han Sen's level, it made the humans of the universe of kingdoms strive to improve their inner power. Overall, it brought them up to a higher tier. Yin Din frowned slightly. He coldly said, no matter how fast your body is, I do not believe you will be able to dodge all of my powers. Yin Dan's body moved. It was like a shadow surrounding Han Sen, and it was moving fast. The bow in Yin Dan's hands kept firing as he went. The rain of arrows came from four sides in eight directions. Yet, Yin Dan did not dare get too close to his enemy. He knew he could not compete with the scary self-battle body power. He did not dare fight Han Sen face to face. In fact, Han Sen cared very little about Yin Dan. He was in a critical moment when it came to fighting the flying Yin Spears. He felt as if he improved once more, he could break the core powers of the flying Yin Spears. By doing that, the tide would be turned. Even Han Sen's heart was not moved during this fight. He had already pushed his body to the max. It made him able to move swiftly and smoothly amid the rain of arrows as easily as if it was a walk in the park, traveling by 10,000 flowers and bushes without a single leaf touching him. Dollar's body battle power is terrifying. Sky King could not help but compliment what he was witnessing. In the Geno Hall, the Hall's leader and 12 God Spirits watched the battle unfold with their heads held low. They saw Hansen having a chill stroll in the midst of an invisible rain of arrows. Hansen's battle body power has reached the max, a god spirit said with a sigh. I do not think any one of us will be able to beat him here. This power is not unchangeable, empty god coldly said. Even if his body's battle power does not allow him to lose, it does not mean his body is invincible. So, what? His body is better than that of a god spirit. He is invincible. Do you really think there is a power in this world that can stop him? Another god spirit did not agree with Empty God's assessment. Even if he is invincible, he still has to play by the rules, Empty God coldly said. The break world power can hurt him, and my power can affect him too. I have faith in Dollar. Perhaps he really can reach that step. Hardly. Qin Xiu wanted to reach that level too, but he failed. Do you guys believe Qin Xiu is weaker than Hansen is? Right now? Qin Xiu achieved an invincible body, but even he still failed. The twelve high-level god spirits continued their discussions. Meanwhile, the hall leader only smiled and continued to watch the fight between Han Sen and Yin Dan unfold. He said nothing. Yin Dan used many tricks, but he was unable to harm Han Sen's body. Over time, the power of the flying Yin spears grew steadily weaker. Many people knew Yin Dan's power was fading. He did not stand a chance. When Dollar completely controlled the flying Yin Spears, Yin Dan would lose. Yin Dan did not look disappointed. He was still holding his bow, but had stopped firing arrows. He looked at Han Sen and smiled. You are a very powerful person. It is a shame the people around you might not be as strong as you are. I am counting down the time until Rocky D arrives. When Han Sen heard those words, he immediately frowned. The time is now. Yin Dan suddenly moved his bow. Many arrows suddenly fired. In Jade Wall City's Fong family castle, a man and a woman arrived at the castle's door. The man was wearing a top hat and three-piece suit. He had a very thick, big, black beard. He was holding a beautiful cane. The woman looked like a maid, but her head had a dragon horn. The castle's guards walked before them and asked, Do you need something? Rocky D continued walking ahead as if the guards did not exist. The guards tried to stop him but the dragon lady's eyes froze. The guards felt as if they had been stared at by a big dragon. They were filled with the terrifying fear of the big, scary dragon. Their bodies were pushed to the ground. Their limbs were spread out across the floor. They were unable to move. Han Sen, no matter how strong you become, you are a human with weaknesses. Therefore, you can only lose. Rocky D squinted his eyes as he held the cane. He was going inside the Fong family castle. Phone Fei Fei, Phone Yin Yin, and the others were all there watching the god fights when they heard the guards scream. They hurried out to have a look. They saw Rocky D and the dragon maid coming. Their faces immediately changed. Hansen had told them about Rocky D. They recognized who this character was because Rocky D's shape and appearance were very easy to remember. Chapter 3183 Wooden Sword 
Who are you people? How dare you come to the Fong family? Are you not afraid of the Qin Kingdom's law? Fong Fei Fei was protecting Fong Yin Yin and Bauer as she shouted at Rocky D. Beautiful lady, if this was a normal day, I could spend all day discussing the law and other knowledgeable things with you. Alas, today is not a normal day. I have come here for her. Therefore, I am sorry. Rocky D used his cane to point at Bauer. Fong Yin Yin protected Bauer, but the dragon maid stared at her. A scary sword of power suddenly whelmed and suppressed her. It affected Fong Fei Fei too. She and Fong Yin Yin were pinned to the ground and unable to move. Boom. Fire blazed as a small white fish appeared in front of them. The power of the dragon maid vanished. It was like her power had been burned to a crisp by the fire. You can play with the small fish, Rocky D coldly said. The dragon maid nodded. Her body expanded, tearing the black maid outfit she was wearing. She turned into a black dragon standing on all fours. Everyone in the Fong family's castle trembled as the dragon's breath came bearing down on the little flying fish. The small flying fish spewed white fire that struck the big black dragon's dragon breath. It created a scene in which neither of the two could win. One white and one black, two different fires, collided and erased each other out. Rocky D circled the battleground and walked toward Bauer at the back. His face had a gentleman's smile as he said, You are a cute little princess. You should not be afraid. Uncle is going to take you to a beautiful castle where you will be a privileged guest there. Really? Bauer asked with a weird blink. Bauer, do not trust that man. He is a bad guy. Fong Yin Yin grabbed Bauer and retreated. I am not exactly a bad guy, Rocky D said with a smile as he started walking toward Bauer. That is because I am not human. I am a god. You can call me a bad god or an evil god. One of those two will work. My name is Rocky D, and my god title is Paper God. Let's go. Fong Fei Fei tried her best to protect them. She wanted to run away with him. Rocky D waved his hands. Two paper pieces flew out of his hands. One of his hands looked like it was a crane holding a cold blade. The two sheets of paper were suddenly cut into two paper persons. The two paper men stood up. According to their actions, Fong Fei Fei and Fong Yin Yin no longer had control of their bodies. They behaved as the paper men did. Unable to do anything about it, they let go of Bauer and walked to the side. Do not worry. You two beautiful ladies, Rocky D said with a smile. I am an honorable god spirit. I wouldn't dare dream of killing a woman. He walked past both of them and approached Bauer. Beautiful little princess, do you want to come to my castle as an esteemed guest? Rocky D lowered his body to perform a gracious gesture. Okay, Bauer laughed and said with a nod. She put a small hand in Rocky D's hand. Rocky D smiled. But Fong Fei Fei and Fong Yin Yin looked as if they were in a desperate rush. Unfortunately, they could not move or speak. They had to watch Bauer be taken by Rocky D to the castle's door. Let go of Lady Bauer. A calm voice sounded from in the castle. Rocky D looked back. He saw a middle-aged man holding a tea set going toward them. Judging from his clothing, one was able to tell that he must have been a servant at the castle. When Rocky D saw that person, his eyes froze. He looked at the middle-aged man and called out his name. He did so slowly and word by word. Jian. Bu. Gu. Please let Miss Bauer go. Jian Bu Gu stepped forward with an expression that did not change. Rocky D was holding Bauer by the hand. He did not let her go. He smiled and said, Jian Bu Gu, the oath you made is yet to see you released. So, what? Are you really going to stop me by fighting me? Are you going to break your oath? Or, are you just going to do nothing and watch me walk away? Jin Bugu coldly said, I did make an oath. Of course, I will not break it. What is the point of you stepping forward now? Rocky D asked with a lift of his lips. So, what? Does it matter that you are Jin Bugu? A Jin Bugu that cannot wield a sword is no better than a gutter rat. Jin Bugu did not answer. He walked toward Bauer. He put the tea set in front of Bauer and said, Miss Bauer, this is a gift for you. Rocky D was scared of Jian Bugu, but he did not do anything. He looked at what was on the tea set. It was a sword. It was a short sword made of wood. It was only one foot long and looked like a toy for children. Rocky D and the others could tell the wooden sword was not a gene race or a sacrifice. It was like an ordinary decoration that had been made from wood. What is this? Val picked up the sword and asked with curiosity. 
This is a wooden sword I always carry around with me, Jin Bugu said. My father made it for me when I was young. It was a birthday gift. This is so important. I cannot take this from you. Dawa shook her head. She wanted to return it to Jian Bugu. Jian Bugu put away the tea set and smiled. Do not worry about it, Miss Bauer. My father was just an ordinary man who did not have a god's spirit blood pulse. It did not matter what type of wood or the craftsmanship. The wooden sword he made for me is just a common thing. Please, do not think of it as useless. Take it. I love this gift, Bauer said as she held the wooden sword. Rocky D looked at the wooden sword and coldly asked, Jian Bugu. Do you think that wooden sword is going to stop me? He could not tell what was so amazing about that wooden sword. It was just as Jian Bugu said. It was an ordinary wooden sword with nothing remarkable about it. The material and craftsmanship were decidedly average. It seemed that if he wanted to, he could crutch it with ease. No, Jian Bu shook his head and said nothing more. He walked away with the tea set in his hands, making no effort to stop Rocky D. Rocky D looked weird. After watching Jian Bugu return to the garden, he turned his gaze back to Bauer's new wooden sword. There was nothing special or powerful about it. Princess Bauer, let's go. Rocky D was confused. If Jian Bugu was not going to fight, then he did not worry. He did not think a wooden sword could do anything much to him. Bauer nodded and said to Fong Fei Fei and Fong Yin Yin, Sister Fei Fei and Sister Yin Yin, I will go to his home to play. I will be right back. Fong Fei Fei and Fong Yin Yin were worried, but they could not move or speak. They could only watch Bawa hold Rocky D's hand and head for the castle's gates. The castle's gates were twisted by some power. After they went through the gates, they vanished. The dragon maid still had the form of a big black dragon. She spat out a dragon breath that shook the little fish back a bit. She soon returned to her image of a dragon maid. After that, she fled through the castle's gates. When the little flying fish followed, the door into space returned to normal. The little flying fish went outside, but it could no longer see Rocky D or the dragon maid. Fong Fei Fei and Fong Yin Yin were given back control of their bodies. When they ran outside of the castle, they could not see Bauer. Chapter 3184 I want to kill people. In the space battleground, Yin Dan kept firing his arrows. He was like a crazy storm, flinging arrows at Hansen without reprieve. He thought he could expose flaws in Han Sen's heart by telling him what had happened in his absence. The arrows did not harm Han Senator his body was still able to keep that fight to survive mode going. Not a single arrow was able to bring harm to his body. Hansen still tried his best to break the flying Yen Spear's defense. He had a feeling that once he succeeded, he would be given something quite surprising. Yen Dan coldly grunted. The southbound leaving bird Jean race exploded. The arrows were given fire. They were no longer only operating in empty power mode. A sky full of arrows came raining down on Han Senator. They were not transparent anymore. They came with very powerful fire arrow power. The moment they touched down on Han Sen's body, the arrows exploded like a sun. Many suns were exploding near Han Senator's scary powers seemed to be able to melt space. After the group of suns was extinguished, Han Sen's body broke out from space. It was still complete. It was not damaged. Yin Dan frowned. Out of the three rare gene races with an ultimate body, the southbound leaving bird had the greatest amount of power. Yet, not even the power of the southbound leaving bird could damage Han Sen's almighty body. By comparison, the other gene races were beyond useless. Suddenly, Yin Dan's eyes turned bright. It was like he had just felt something from amid all that was going on. He had combined with Rocky D's small amount of God Spirit juice. Although it was still Yin Dan, and he was not really controlled by Rocky D's soul. He somehow had a weird connection to Rocky D. Your daughter is in Rocky D's hands. If you want her to be safe, exit the fight now. Yan Dan used a secretive voice to speak to Han Senator. He did not want people to know he had used this dirty method to win the fight. Really? Hansen finally said something, but he quickly stopped speaking. The flying Yan spears in his hands came to a stop. They were like dead objects fixed in Han Sen's grasp. If people were to look closer, they would have seen red markings upon those spooky black spears. They were like bloody, enlarged veins that had started to creep all across the flying yen spears. The blood pulse break world powers completely took control of the flying yen spears. They were now under Hansen's control. Hansen was feeling rather sublime. 
The structure of the flying yin spears was now inside his head. He felt the heartbeats and souls that resided inside the flying yin spears. It was a feeling that could not be described. It was like the flying yin spears were his own creation. He was the god that made the flying yin spears. But it did not feel like it. Even a god might not be able to understand someone's heart completely. But Hansen's feeling made him think he fully understood the flying yin spears. Yin Dan's voice sounded again. Hansen, did you hear what I said? You need to lose to me or else your daughter will die. Hansen's eyes looked cold. He looked at Yin Dan with a razor-like glare that was sharper than any blade. Hansen did not enjoy killing people. He did even enjoy killing his greatest enemies. It was because he was able to understand. From the viewpoint of an opponent, it was normal to want to kill them. He treated people the way they treated him. There was no reason to add unnecessary emotions into the mix. Yin Dan's words made Hansen fill up with a lust for murder. The look Yin Dan received from Hansen gave him the creeps. In shock, he suddenly started to step back. He quickly looked normal again. Bauer was in Rocky D's hands. He was now in the space battleground. Even if Hansen did not care about his daughter's life, he could concede and leave the space battleground. He did not have to be afraid of Hansen. Hansen, if you do not believe me, I can tell you that your daughter is wearing sunglasses. Those sunglasses are... Yin Dan did not think Hansen believed the story about Bauer being taken away by Rocky D. Therefore, he described to him what Bauer was wearing. I have never seen your daughter before, so I have no idea what she looked like, Yin Dan said. Do you believe me now? If you do not lose, then your daughter will have to die. Hansen looked at Yin Dan coldly and said, I believe you. I believed you from the beginning. He was holding the flying Yin spears. They exploded with a weird power. Yin Dan looked at Hansen and asked, If you believe it, then what are you going to do? Kill you. Hansen was cold and emotionless when he said that. When Hansen's voice was heard, the two flying Yin spears in his hands underwent some changes. The indestructible spears were dissolved. They became the most primitive of substances. They appeared like smoke surrounding Hansen. The flying Yin spears' souls followed Hansen's thoughts. He used their origins as a blueprint and dissolved the flying Yin spears. This process did not require fire to burn them or a hammer to break them. This was a swap of the substance's original form. It was perfect for others to reforge. Emptiness and mist were going toward Hansen's hands. They formed the shape of something in Hansen's hands. A black short bow appeared in Hansen's left hand, and a black arrow manifested in his right hand. The bow and arrow were releasing a powerful empty god power. Yin Dan's eyes turned red. He madly spoke to Han Sr. Do you not want your daughter to live? Is this fight more important than her life? If you do not concede, she will die. It will be a gruesome death too. No one can kill my daughter. And you? You will die. Even a sky full of gods and demons will be unable to save you. Hansen put the black arrow against the short bow string and tugged it. The bow is not big. The moment Hansen pulled the string, Yin Dan's heart still jumped. He developed a cold sweat. It was like he had suddenly been shrouded by an aura of death. Yin Dan felt as if he was in the middle of a strong crisis that could quickly result in his doom. He knew Hansen was going to kill him. He was not joking around. Without hesitation, Yin Dan conceded. Although he did not like it, he could not keep going. Hansen, your daughter is dead. Yin Dan madly whispered to Han Senator at the same time. A space tunnel appeared next to him. Yin Dan entered it, ready to leave the space battleground. The audience of the Seven Kingdoms could not hear them speak, but they saw Yin Dan conceding. They knew the fight was going to end with Dollar emerging victorious. They then heard Han Sen's mad voice. I said you were dying today. Yin Dan's body was about to pass through the space tunnel. He looked as if he underestimated the scenario. It is a shame you cannot kill me today, and you will never be able to. Yin Dan already knew he had conceded and earned the protection of a god spirit. A god spirit would not allow a person who had conceded to be attacked, and he had already entered the space tunnel. Hansen pulled the bowstring as hard as he could and yelled, No matter which god spirit controls the space battleground, I, Dollar, will seal the space battleground and not allow anyone to leave. I want to kill someone. Is he crazy? When everyone heard Hansen's words, they were surprised. Yin Dan looked disdained. Chapter 3185 Extra story for commemorating two years. The end is not the end. My name is Han Jinji, a five-year-old child in elephant kindergarten, 
You're three. I should be at the stage of a flower with a colorful life. To me, all I see is darkness. I am from a family of liars. My father was a liar. My grandfather was a liar. My granddad's granddad was a liar. I don't know which granddad it started with, but we are a family of scammers. The scammers are an organization. The people in this organization disguise themselves as fortune tellers. All they do is lie to people. Although the organization's members can tell fortunes, none of them believe in fate. The so-called fate is just a tool for scammers to lie with. The scammers do not believe in fate and reincarnation. They do not believe in karma. They do not talk about relationships. They are good at watching people and calculating their decision. If people become a target of the scammers, it means nothing but bad luck for them. They would end up losing money easily. If their luck was very bad, the family would probably be broken and people would die. I come from a family with that kind of background, but I believe in fate. More accurately, I can see fate. Yes, to use words that modern people use, you might say that I have superpowers. My powers enable me to see things. My powers enable me to see more than the fate of a person. Every substance in this world can be seen through by me, and I can analyze the fate of all. For example, I can see the results of the next lottery. I will be able to tell what the lottery numbers are. If I wanted to, I could see which horse will win in the next horse race. I can even tell what job people will end up doing, who they will end up marrying, and where they'll die. If I choose to, I can see everyone's ending. Although my powers cannot enable me to see one's progress, seeing the end, which is all I can do, is enough. I am like a cheater who can see all the answers to an exam. It does not matter how I get somewhere. As long as I can see the answers, it does not matter. I cannot be wrong. Some people think this is great. It is like living the life of a cheater. It certainly makes people jealous and crazy, but I would rather not have any power. The power to see the fates of all has led me down a dark life. Although I am only five years old, I carry the weight of an old man on his deathbed. I am not interested in anything. In kindergarten, I have a very good friend. He loves to play football. His dream is to become a football-playing superstar. He also wants me to practice playing football with him so I can become his best partner. He wants to win the World Cup and become a superstar. I thought this was a great idea. After thinking about it, my superpower started. I saw my little friend's future. In the future, I can see he is not a football player. He is a fat, middle-aged salesman who gets drunk every day. Not even mentioning football, after running 150 feet, he would probably end up collapsing due to exhaustion. It was at that moment I lost all interest in football. No matter how hard I try to play with him, I knew he would not end up being a football player. It would just be a waste of time. The fates I see are never wrong, and they can never be changed. In Elephant Kindergarten, I have a very beautiful classmate. I like her a lot. I would like to be her best friend. I might even like to be more than that. When I think about her, my superpowers kick in. It enables me to see into her future. She will be married to a 40-year-old bald guy. She will wear a wedding dress and go down the aisle of a church with that man. At that moment, my life was ruined. I lost interest in everything because no matter what I did, I saw the end of all futures. I go to watch football, but I know the result. I go and watch a movie, but I know what the ending will entail. If I go to watch pretty women swim, but I see the pretty women become old before they die. This world is cruel to me. Darkness is all around me. It's all there is. I have tried to change fate, such as me hating onions. I saw that my mother was going to make onions and fried eggs in the morning, so I threw all the onions away at home and bought all the onions in the supermarkets and markets of three shopping districts. Don't ask me why a five-year-old kid can do this. Money has never been a concern for me. The next morning, I saw that the eggs for breakfast still contained onions. It broke my little heart. Baby, you should eat more onions. Recently, Grandad from the countryside has grown a lot of onions. It was a great harvest this year. We have lots and lots of them. Mom was happy as she was telling me this. So, we ate onions for a month. I started to think it was a punishment from God for me trying to change fate. No one can understand my pain. In this world, there are no unknowns to me. There is nothing fresh for me. I have lost the thing in my life I most cherished. What was that? It was a hope for the future. On my way home from school, I watched the sunset above the river. It made me feel extremely sad. 
I asked myself why a five-year-old kindergartner would end up walking home alone. It was no big deal because my mother, father, grandfather, grandmother, uncles, and aunties are all scammers. They're the masters of it. They have always been busy. They never had the time to pick me up from school. Of course, my mother tried to take me to school. On our way there, she scammed two wallets and a car from someone. By the time we reached school, she tried to scam my kindergarten teacher. I forced her out of the school and begged them to never take me there again. Sigh. What is the point of my life? Sitting near a river, my heart just felt sad. Going home was meaningless to me. There would be no one at home. I heard that everyone will be taking part in an operation to scam a rich man. It has been half a month since I saw them. Little brother, why are you here? Did you lose your family? A soft voice sounded in my head. From the tip of my nose, I detected a very young presence. I raised my head to take a look. I realized it was a big sister wearing white sports clothing. Her hair was up in a ponytail. I was shocked. I had never seen such a beautiful woman there before. She was obviously out for a jog. She must have been living in the area. The big sister noticed I did not respond. She crouched to my level, took my hand, and asked me, Little brother, what is your name? My name is Han Jinji. I could not help but answer. Usually, I did not talk to people, but I was a kindergartner who judged people by their appearance. This girl was mega pretty and cute. I was more than obliged to answer her. Your name is pretty funny, the big sister said with a soft smile. It does not sound like a name someone this young should have. My name was given to me by my grandfather. I replied. He said our family cannot be made to obey ghosts and gods, nor do we need to have manners. We don't need to be kind or care about ethics and moralities, but we must be respectful. Otherwise, we are not human. That is why they gave me the name Hanjinji. It was so I could have a bit of humanity. Actually, I never understood what my grandfather meant. When they started to lie, they never seemed to care about the well-being of others. When they got home, they never talked about lying. Your grandfather is funny, the big sister said with a smile. Maybe she thought I was joking. I did not dare look at her. I was afraid I might accidentally see her future and end up watching her die or have sex with an old man. That would only make me sad. Little Zhishi, would you like to come and drink a milk tea with me? The big sister asked. Although I did not like milk tea... I was a kindergartner who judged people via their appearance. Therefore, I nodded in acceptance. I grabbed her hand and followed her to a milk tea shop. I was not afraid of her being a human trafficker. When I was free, I helped two human traffickers who once tried to sell me. When I left, they thanked me. The big sister was cute and nice. Drinking milk tea with her made me very happy. It made my sorrows fall out of mind for a time, which led me to eventually look at her. It was at this time my damned abilities of clairvoyance kicked in. The scene that broke my heart played in my head. The beautiful and cute big sister got out of a red sports car. Then, a group of people dressed in black under down. Her blood spilled out like flowers. Without a doubt, she was going to die. My mood dropped into another realm of darkness. I only saw the future without knowing how or when it would happen. I also did not know where it would happen. Whatever the case might have been, I could not stop it from happening. I hated myself for having powers like that, and I hated myself for being even more useless. I did not want things to end that way. The big sister could see I was looking upset. With genuine worry, she asked me what was wrong. Little Zhishi, what is wrong? Big sister, can you not drive a red sports car for a while? I tried again to change her fate. Why? The big sister asked with a weird look. I can see the future. If you drive a red sports car, your life will be cut short. I knew this would be very hard for her to believe, but I really wanted to convince her. I did not want to watch her die. The big sister looked surprised. She used her soft hands to touch my head. She smiled and said, Little Zhishi, you are concerned for my well-being. I thank you very much for that, but I am not going to die. I knew you would not believe me, but the future cannot be changed. I was very disappointed. I felt an ache in my heart. I hated myself for being so useless. The big sister grabbed my hand and looked serious. She said, I believe you, little Zhishi. You just need to remember that the end is not the end. If you really have a superpower that enables you to see the future, if you see people down the line who require assistance, you should not give up the pursuit to course correct and help them. It does not matter what happens in the end. 
Just try your best to do your job. Is that okay? My mood was terrible. All I did was nod. I didn't even listen to her properly. I left the big sister in a sour mood, but I kept thinking that I could not let this go. She was a kind and cute big sister. I could not sit idly by and let her die. Even if God wants her dead, I must do what I can to save her. My heart suddenly mustered the courage needed to fight. Although I did not know her name or know where she lived, it was not a big problem for people who were born into a family of scammers. Scammers were very good at gathering information and predicting things. I thought about the future scenes. The location where the big sister got killed was at a large crossroads. There were no signs. Judging from the plants near the road, there was only one place in the city it could have been. The telltale sign was the Allen Grass. When it happened, it had to be in this city. The width of the main road was 120 feet. There are only three main roads with a width like that. I kept analyzing the images I had. I studied a map to try and find my target. Judging from the moon's location, the time should be around 10 a.m. It is tonight. I looked at the time. It was five minutes away from the time of the hit. No, I hated myself for not trying to save the big sister sooner. If I had been able to do things sooner, I might have been able to keep her safe. Before we parted ways, I should have gotten her phone number. That could have helped this situation be avoided. I madly ran out of the room. I stole the bike my mom rode to buy food each day and went as fast as I could to the location I had determined the event would be taking place. The traffic rules and lights could all go to hell. I had to save Big Sister. I rode as fast as I was able to, but the bike felt as if it was no quicker than a snail. I watched time go by. I was in a huge rush. Finally, I arrived at the street I saw in my future vision. I saw Big Sister's red sports car. She got out of the car. She was very pretty that night. She was wearing a red jacket and stockings. Her heels looked very attractive. At the same time, I saw men in black holding machine guns. Big. Sis. Tur. Hurry. Run. I was too late to save Big Sister. I rode as fast as I could to the men in black and shouted. Ta-da-ta-da. -ta -ta. Pang. The sound of the guns and a collision made their noises louder. I steered my bike to hit the men in black. The men in black fired their guns, but they did not hit the big sister. This is great. I did not think about what the result might have been. I just felt happy about saving the big sister. I had never felt this happy before. Cut. 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 Who is this kid? I am sorry, director. That is my friend. After falling onto the ground, I saw a middle-aged man with a megaphone. He was shouting madly. People were using all kinds of tools around. The big sister apologized to the middle-aged man. I had an emotion overwhelm me that had never happened before. I was frozen. The big sister came in front of me. She held me in her arms. And asked with worry, Little Zhishi, thank you for saving me. Are you okay? I am fine. I am just glad you were okay. I was finally starting to realize what had happened. I was not annoyed by my mistake. I actually thought it was rather wonderful. After I told my five-year-old story, I lit up a cigarette and breathed deeply. I exhaled the smoke. With a righteous look, I said, ever since that time, I understood that the end was not the end. If I found people who needed help, I would help. I would ask for their phone numbers. Although the chances are one in a million, I have decided to save whoever I can. It was the promise I made to that big sister. The pretty girl sitting next to me looked at me. She looked scary. She was like a volcano about to erupt. She madly shouted, Han Jinji, is that why when I went to the bathroom you decided to ask that pretty woman for her phone number? Slap. What happened next was a slap. There was then the scene of a pretty woman madly leaving. Fine. I admit it. The story is real, but I only wanted to hit on the hot woman. I couldn't help it because I am Han Jinji. I am a guy who judges people by their appearances. Seeing the pretty woman leave, I picked up a cigarette and took another hefty puff. I let the smoke flow out. In my eyes, I looked into the future of the beautiful woman. There was a fire where Hansen was. Fire was everywhere in the bar. Wires sparked. Lots of lights fell from the roof. A big, circular light hit the beautiful girl's head while she was running. Ding. The fire alarm started ringing. Can I change the future? Seeing everyone running in fear with the fire spreading, I calmly sat in front of the bar. I picked up a drink and looked at the light in the center of the bar. 
The scammers are an organization, the people of which are scammers that disguise themselves as fortune tellers. All they do is lie to people. Although the organization's members can tell fortunes, none of them believe in fate. The so-called fate is just a tool for scammers to lie with. The scammers do not believe in fate and reincarnation. They do not believe in karma. They do not talk about relationships. They are good at watching people and calculating their decision. If people become a target of the scammers, it was nothing but bad luck for them. They would end up losing money easily. If the luck was worse, the family would probably break and people would die. I came from a family with that kind of background, but I believe in fate. More accurately, I can see fate. Yes, to use words that modern people use, you might say I have superpowers. My powers enable me to see things. My powers enable me to see more than the fate of a person. Every substance in this world can be seen through by me, and I can analyze the fate of all. Such as, I can see what the results of the next lottery will be. I will be able to tell what the lottery numbers are. And if I want to, I can see which horse will win in the next horse race. I can even tell what job people will end doing and who they will end up marrying, where they'll die. If I want, I can see the ends of everyone. Although my powers cannot enable me to see one's progress, seeing the end, which is all I can do is enough. I am like a cheater that can see all the answers to an exam. It does not matter how I get somewhere, but as long as I can see the answers, it does not matter. I cannot be wrong. Some people think this is great. It is like living the life of a cheater. It certainly makes people jealous and crazy, but I would rather not have any power. The power to see the fates of all has led me down a dark life. Although I am only five years old, I carry the weight of an old man on his deathbed. I am not interested in anything. In kindergarten, I have a very good friend. He loves to play football quite a lot, and his dream is to become a football-playing superstar. He also wants me to practice playing football with him, so I can become his best partner. He wants to win the World Cup and become a superstar. I thought this was great, but after thinking about it, my superpower had only just started. I saw my little friend's future. But in the future, I can see he is not a football player. He is a fat, middle-aged salesman that gets drunk every day. Let's not even mention football, but after running 50 meters, he would probably end up collapsing due to exhaustion. It was at that moment I lost all interest in football. That was because, no matter how hard I try to play with him, he will not end up being a football player. It would just be a waste of time. The fates I see are never wrong and they can never be changed. In our elephant kindergarten, there is a very beautiful classmate of mine. I like her a lot. I would like to be her best friend. I might even like to be more than that. But when I think about her, my superpowers kick in. It enables me to see into her future, and in the future, she will be married to a 40-year-old bald guy. She will wear a wedding dress and go down the aisle of a church with that man. At that moment, my life was ruined. I lost interest in everything because no matter what I do, I see the end of all futures. I go to watch football. I know the result. I go and watch a movie, I know what the ending will entail. If I go to watch pretty women swim, I will see the pretty women become so old before they die. This world is so cruel to me. Darkness is all around me. It's all there is. I have tried to change fate, like me hating onions. I see in the future that my mother will make onions and fried eggs in the morning. So, I throw all the onions away at home and buy all the onions in the supermarkets and markets of three shopping districts. Don't ask me why a five-year-old kid can do this. Money has never been a concern for me. But the next morning, I can see the eggs for breakfast still contain onions. It breaks my little heart. Baby, you should eat more onions. Recently, Granddad from the countryside has grown a lot of onions. It was a great harvest this year. We have lots and lots of them. Mum was so happy when she was telling me this. So, we ate onions for a month. I started to think this was a punishment from God for me trying to change fate. No one can understand my pain. In this world, there are no unknowns to me. There is nothing fresh for me. I have lost the thing in my life I most cherished. And what was that? It was a hope for the future. On my way home from school, I watched the sunset above the river. It made me feel so sad. I asked myself why a five-year-old kindergarten kid would end up walking home alone. It was no big deal, as my mother, father, Grandfather, grandmother, uncles, and aunties are all scammers. And they are the masters of it. They have always been busy, never having the time to pick me up from school. 
Of course, my mother has tried to send me to school. But on my way to school, she scammed two wallets and a car from someone. By the time we reached school, she tried to scam my kindergarten teacher. I forced her out of the kindergarten and begged them never to come and take me to school again. Sigh. What is the point of my life? Sitting near a river, my heart just feels sad. Going home is meaningless to me. There will be no one at home, as I have heard everyone will be taking part in an operation to scam a rich man. It has been half a month since I saw them. Little brother, why are you here? Did you lose your family? A soft voice sounded in my head. From the tip of my nose, I detect a very young presence. I raise my head to take a look, and I realize it is a big sister that is wearing white sports clothing. She also has her hair done in a ponytail. I was shocked. I had never seen such a beautiful woman near there before. She was obviously out for a jog. She must have been living in the area. Little brother, what is your name? The big sister noticed I did not respond. She crouched to my level, took my hand, and asked me this question. My name is Han Jinji. I could not help but answer. Usually, I would not talk to people, but I was a kindergarten boy that judged people by their appearance. And this girl? She was mega pretty and ultra cute. I was more than obliged to answer her. Your name is pretty funny. It does not look like a name someone this young should have, the big sister said with a soft smile. This is a name that was given to me by my grandfather. He said our family cannot be made to obey ghosts and gods. And neither do we need to have manners. We don't need to be kind or care about ethics and moralities, but we must be respectful. Otherwise, we are not human. That is why they gave me the name Hanjinji. It was so I could have a bit of humanity, I said. Actually, I never did understand what my grandfather meant. When they started to lie, they never seemed to care about the well-being of others. But when they got home, they never talked about lying. Your grandfather is funny, the big sister said with a smile. Maybe she really did think I was joking. I did not dare look at her because I was afraid I might see her future by accident, end up watching her die, or have sex with an old man. That would only make me sad. Little Zhishi, would you like to come and drink a milk tea with Big Sister? The Big Sister asked. Although I did not like milk tea, I was a kindergarten school kid that judged people via their appearance. Therefore, I nodded in acceptance. I grabbed the Big Sister's hand and followed her to a milk tea shop. I was not afraid of her being a human trafficker. That was because, when I was free, I sold two human traffickers that once tried to sell me before. And when I left, they thanked me. The big sister was so cute and nice. To drink milk tea with her made me so happy. It made my sorrows fall out of mind for a time, which led me to eventually look at her. But it was at this time my damned abilities of clairvoyance kicked in. The scene that broke my heart played in my head. The beautiful and cute big sister got out of a red supercar, and then, a group of people that were dressed in black gunned her down. The blood of her body spilled out like flowers. Without a doubt, she was going to die. My mood dropped into another realm of darkness. I could only see the future, without knowing how or when it might happen. Neither did I know where it might happen. But whatever the case might have been, I could not stop it from happening. I hated myself for having powers like that and I hated myself for being useless even more. I did not want things to end that way. Little Shishi, what is wrong? The big sister could see I was looking upset, and with genuine worry, she asked me what was wrong. Big sister, can you not drive a red supercar for a while? I tried again, to change this fate of hers. Why? The big sister asked with a weird look. It is because I can see the future. If you drive a red supercar, your life will be cut short. I knew this would be very hard for her to believe, but I really wanted to convince her. I really did not want to watch her die. The big sister looked surprised. She used her soft hands to touch my head. She smiled and said, Little Zhishi, you are concerned for my well-being. I thank you very much for this, but I am not going to die. I knew you would not believe me, but the future cannot be changed. I was so disappointed. I felt an ache in my heart. I hated myself for being so useless. The big sister grabbed my hand and looked serious. She said, I believe you, little Zhishi. You just need to remember that the end is not the end. If you really have a superpower that enables you to see the future, if you see people down the line that require assistance, you should not give up the pursuit to course correct and help them. It does not matter what happens in the end. Just try your best to do your job. Is that okay? My mood was terrible. All I did was nod, not even listening to her properly.
I left the big sister in a sour mood, but I kept thinking that I could not let this go. She was such a kind and cute big sister, I could not sit idly by and let her die. Even if God wants her dead, I must do what I can to save her. All of a sudden, my heart mustered the courage needed to fight. Although I did not even know her name or know where she lived, this was not a big problem for people who were born into a family of scammers. Scammers were very good at gathering information and being able to predict things. I thought about the future scenes and where the big sister got killed was at a large crossroad. There were no signs, but judging from the plants near the road, there was only one place in the city it could have been. The telltale sign was the Allen grass. So, when it happened, it had to be in this city. The width of the main road was 40 meters. There are only three main roads with a width like that. I kept analyzing the images I had, and I studied a map to try and find my target. The time should be around 10 o'clock, judging from the moon's location, it is tonight. I look at the time. It was five minutes away from the time of the hit. No, I hate myself for not trying to save the big sister sooner. If I had been able to do things sooner, I might have been able to keep her safe. Or before we parted ways, I got her phone number. This could have definitely been avoided. I ran out of the room like mad. I stole the bike my mum rode to buy food each day, and I went as fast as I could to the location I had determined the event to be. The traffic rules. The lights. They could all go to hell. I had to save Big Sister. I drive as fast as I was able to, but the bike felt as if it was no quicker than a snail. I watched the time go by and I was in a huge rush. Finally, I came to the street I saw in my future vision. I saw Big Sister's red supercar. She got out of the car, so pretty that night. She was wearing a red jacket and stockings. Her heel also looked very attractive. But at the same time, I saw the men in black hold their machine guns. Big. Sis. Tur. Hurry. Run. It was too late to save Big Sister. I drove as fast as I could to the men in black and shouted. Ta-da-ta-da. -ta -da. Pang. The sound of the guns and the sound of a collision made their noises together. I and my bike hit the men in black. The men in black fired their guns a bit, but they did not hit Big Sister. This is great. I did not think about what the result of this might have been, but I felt so happy about saving Big Sister. I had never felt this happy before. Cut. 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 Who is this kid? I am sorry, director, but that is my friend. After falling onto the floor, he saw a middle-aged man on a megaphone. He was shouting madly. People were using all kinds of tools around. Big Sister apologized to the middle-aged man. I had an emotion overwhelm me that had never happened before. I was frozen. Little Xi Xi, thank you for saving me. Are you okay? Big Sister came in front of me. She held me in her arms and asked with worry. I am fine. I am just glad you were okay. I was finally starting to realize what had been happening. I was not annoyed by my mistake. I actually thought this was rather wonderful. After I told my five-year-old story, I lit up a cigarette and breathed deeply. I exhaled the smoke and with a righteous look said, Ever since that time, I understood that the end was not the end. If I found people that needed help, I would help. I would ask for their phone numbers. Although the chances are one in a million, I have decided to save whoever I can. It was the promise I made to that big sister. The pretty girl that sat next to me looked at me. She looked so scary. She was like a volcanic eruption. She madly shouted at me, Han Jinji, is that why when I went to the bathroom you decided to ask that pretty woman for her phone number? Slap. What happened next was a slap. And then there was the scene of a pretty woman leaving madly. Fine. I admit it. The story is real, but I only wanted to hit on the hot woman. I couldn't help it because I am Han Jinji. I am a guy who judges people by their appearances. Seeing the pretty woman leave, I pick up a cigarette and take another hefty puff. I let the smoke flow out, and in my eyes, I looked into the future of the beautiful woman. Where Hansen was now, there was a fire. In the bar, a fire was everywhere. Wires sparked. Lots of lights fell from the roof. A big, circular light hit the beautiful girl's head while she was running. Ding. The fire alarm rang. Can I change the future? Seeing everyone running in fear with the fire spreading, I calmly sat in front of the bar. I picked up a glass with a drink and looked at the light that was in the center of the bar. Chapter 3186 One arrow pierces through the heart. The god fights were a fighting competition governed by God. Spirits. Every rule was conducted and enforced by God's spirits. 
If people conceded, they earned the protection of a god spirit. Not even the royals of the seven kingdoms and those with inherited blood pulses were allowed to break the rules. Hansen was making a god spirit lock in a person who had already conceded the fight and was leaving the space battleground. This seemed impossible. It was not just Yin Dan that did not believe this. No one believed it. Hansen knew the god spirits would not listen to his commands, but he had not said what he had to control the god spirits. He wanted to tell the god spirits that the fleeing man was a dead man and that they should not be a part of this. When Hansen spoke, he broke the rules of the world. He pushed his power to the max and kept pumping power into the bow he wielded. This Hansen is getting too cocky, Empty God coldly said. How dare he threaten us? Yin Dan was a blood pulse inheritor, so Han Sin's words made Empty God very upset. Moment God bowed to the leader of the hall and said, Mr. Han Sen is breaking the rules again. I am afraid he is only going to become the next Qin Xiao. Are we really going to stand back and let him do whatever he wishes to? Although Han Sen is wrong, it is not a big deal, another God spirit said. There is no need to be hung up over such trivial matters. After all, he has the chance to take the next step. Can we just let him destroy the world we have tirelessly cultivated just because he might walk that step? Empty God looked angry as he spoke. What you said is wrong. Everything happens for a reason. The God Chaos Party sent people to eliminate him. Do you expect Hansen to just stand around and allow those people to strike him down? Are you calling him a sitting duck? The twelve God Spirits were split down the middle with each side sharing one of two opinions. One side wished to put a leash on Han Sen or even kill him when it was necessary. The other side thought they should not interfere and let Han Sen's actions slide. Only one or two God Spirits were ambivalent or neutral about it all. The Hall leader sighed and said, Let's just lock the space battleground. Otherwise, the entire space battleground will be destroyed. Yes, Master. The Hall leader had decided. Although some God Spirits did not agree with the choice, they held their tongues about it. Plus, they knew that if they allowed Hansen to destroy the space battleground, it would reflect more poorly on the god spirits. Space and time in the Geno Hall were different from the outside world. The god spirits had been talking for a long time. To the outside world, only a second had gone by. Yin Dan had not left the battleground, but the space tunnel was on the cusp of shutting down. At this time, the closing space tunnel reopened. Yin Dan had almost escaped but he immediately teleported back into the space battleground. Yin Dan looked shocked about being back on the space battleground. His face could not be described. The space tunnel behind him was gone. Why is it like this? I conceded. I already conceded. Mr. God Spirit, I already conceded. Why, Yin Dan pleaded his conceding again, but the space battleground made no movement. No tunnel through space appeared. The whole of the space battleground was dead silent. The big universe was dead silent too. No one believed this would happen. The god spirits were really doing as dollars said. They were locking down the space battleground. Gods, why? I am a loyal devotee. I do everything properly and have never once offended you. Why are you treating me this way? Where is the justice? Where are the laws we abide by? Where are the gods now? Yin Dan sadly roared. He questioned the sky. The Yin Kingdom's people and nobles all looked angry. From what they saw, Yin Dan had received unfair treatment. You disobeyed the god spirits. That means you should die. Han Sen's voice sounded cold. It was like he was commanding God's judgment. He let go of the bowstring he had pulled back as far as he could. It looked like a full moon. Bezi's T. The moment the arrow left its string, it vanished. Yin Dan could not see the arrow. He was shocked and scared. He knew he could not protect himself from the power in that arrow. He wanted to live, so he released the three rare gene races that combined with him. There was a god bird made of fire, a demon eye weird snake, and a black backed white belly yin. They all appeared in front of Yin Dan. They all shielded him. The power of the three rare gene races exploded. They formed a line in front of Yin Dan. At that moment, it was like an invisible power pierced through the bulwark. The bodies of the three rare gene races were blown through, leaving a bloody hole in each as the invisible force passed through. The invisible power did not stop there. Yin Dan's head, behind all the gene races, became the recipient of a hole. Now, the audience was able to see that the black arrow had managed to stick into Yin Dan's forehead. It went through the back of his head and disappeared into the nether. 
ping, the three rare gene races exploded at the same time. They turned into a sky full of blood rain. Yen Dan's corpse fell from space with his eyes wide open. The universe went dead silent. Everyone felt a chill run down their spines. One arrow had managed to eliminate three rare gene races and kill the elite, Yin Dan. That violent arrow technique frightened all those who watched it. The most shocking part was the fact that the arrow was able to kill Yin Dan after he had conceded the fight. The implications of this were far scarier than the arrow itself. Although Dollar said Yin Dan had committed blasphemy upon the god's spirits, people who knew about this suspected that Yin Dan had done something he shouldn't have. He should not have associated himself with the god Chaos Party. Even so, the god spirits still broke their own rules. A man who made the god spirits bend one of their own rules was scarier than the arrows he could fire. People were frightened to think about something like that. This arrow did not just murder someone. It killed the hearts of many people. The kings of the Seven Kingdoms all strangely looked at the body on the space battleground. The royals represented law and order, but that body was able to break the rules of the god spirits. That rule destroyer made them feel extremely worried. Is Dollar a god chaos party member? An elite thought. Most did not think so. A member of the god chaos party could not participate in a god fight. Otherwise, Rocky D would not have helped Yin Dan. He could have done this himself. Yet, Dollar was not a member of the God Chaos Party member but could still do that. It made people feel weird. Dollar belongs to the God of Wealth. Who is that God of Wealth? How can his members make the God Spirits all agree with him? How powerful must the God of Wealth be? Is he a reboot God Spirit? People really wanted to find out where the God of Wealth Temple resided. After this fight, the Seven Kingdoms sent out many people to scour the universe for the God of Wealth Temple. After Hansen murdered Yin Dan, he quit the space battleground and returned to the phone castle. He knew Bauer was probably fine, but he was still worried. Chapter 3187 Cutting Paper A mountain pierced through the skies. A strange god temple was on its peak. The god temple's structure was very defined. The primary hall was only nine feet tall. It had a few side halls. Overall, it looked very large but a large god temple like that gave people the feeling that it could easily break. It was hard to describe how weird it was. When one looked a bit closer, one realized that the god temple was composed of a white substance. It looked like it was made of paper. It was no wonder that it looked like a place that could easily tumble with one stab. Everything about the white temple was strange. Even the tables, god altar, god stove, and god statues were made of paper. It felt like a very spooky and scary place. Bauer looked at the god temple with interest. She seemed to be rather interested in the locale. Bauer looked at Rocky D and asked with a blink of her eyes, what would happen if I lit a match in here? This is a god temple. It is not ordinary paper. Water, fire, or any other kind of weapon cannot actually deal harm to this temple. Rocky D sat on a paper chair. He flicked his hands and had two human-sized paper people bring a plate forward. They brought over paper plates and paper cups. They poured out a cup of coffee for Rocky D. Rocky D drank his coffee in an elegant posture as he asked Bauer, What does the cute little princess want to drink? I want to drink tea. Bauer was not polite. She just sat down on the paper chair. The thin white paper turned into an S shape. Bauer sat on it. The paper trembled like the thin wings of a cicada, but it did not break. In some ways, it was like a rocking chair. The paper maid quickly brought a cup of tea over. Bauer looked at the paper man made of paper with genuine curiosity. These paper people look rather funny, Bauer said. She watched the paper people with keen interest as she picked up the cup of tea to wet her whistle. If you like, I can give you a few of these paper people. I can cut them out into any face you like. If there is some handsome celebrity or general you admire, I can cut them out for you. Rocky D drank his coffee with a warm smile. I like your face. Why don't you give me a paper person that looks just like you? Bauer happily looked at Rocky D. Rocky D's eyes twitched a little. He looked at Bauer, who had a big pair of gleaming eyes. She looked like a clear spring without any dust. It did not look as if she was making a joke or toying with him. Plus, Bauer had followed him there without issue. Rocky D just thought she was a child who enjoyed playing around. After thinking about it, Rocky D's lips developed a smile. His beard lifted as he thought. I really am a handsome gentleman who has thousands of women and goddesses loving me. Despite how troublesome it is to look this fine, 
I cannot help being so attractive. He looked very cocky as his eyebrows raised. Rocky D put down his cup. He coughed lightly and asked, Do you really want it that much? Bowen nodded. Her little hands became two little fists in front of her chest. She looked at Rocky D happily as she answered, Yes, I really, really, really want it. If your face became a paper person, it would look so good. Rocky D smiled and nodded. Okay, since you are being so sincere about this, I can make one for you. But this is a limited edition, okay? There will only be one in this entire universe. You need to look after it with the utmost care. I will treat it like the most important thing in my life. Bauer raised her head as if she was making a solemn and profound promise. Rocky D loved Bauer's attitude. He took out a white sheet of paper and said, After I make you this, you must stay here nicely until your father comes to pick you up. With your paper copy, it is fine if my father does not come, Bauer said. Rocky D felt very cocky and thought, Being too charming is a bad thing. Even a small little girl like her fancies me to be her daddy. Sigh. This is so troublesome. After that, Rocky D picked up a sheet of paper. His right hand's index and middle fingers behaved like a pair of scissors that cut through the sheet. He kept cutting to cut out his face. He put a lot of effort into the task. It must be stated that Rocky D's skills were very good. Although it was only going to be something like a silhouette without any precise facial details, it looked a lot like him. Even the little beard on it was a bit raised. After cutting, Rocky D trimmed it a little and happily gave it to Bauer. You must look after this thing as if it were your child. This is a unique silhouette. Bauer picked up the paper silhouette and looked as if she cherished it greatly. She said, Thank you, Uncle. Uncle? Rocky D's eyes twitched. He patted Bauer on the head and smiled. Little princess, you should think about calling me Mr. God. If you really want to start calling me. Handsome Mr. Minister, I think that would be rather dandy. It is up to you, of course. I think calling you an uncle is very fitting, Bawa said as she looked at Rocky D. Rocky D's face looked rather glum. He grunted. Whatever. You just stay here and sit still until Hansen comes to pick you up. Okay. If you are here with me, it is fine if my father does not show, Bawa said with a laugh. I do not have any time to play around with you. You can entertain yourself to pass the time. After Rocky D said that, he readied himself to leave. No. I want you to play with me, Bowers said with a shake of her head. Who in this world would waste time playing with you? Besides, I am a very busy man. Rocky D wanted to ignore Bauer. He turned around and walked out of the god temple. After walking a few steps, he felt as if his body was no longer listening to him. He could no longer control his body. He walked back to Bauer. What? What is going on? Rocky D's face changed. He tried using power to control his body but it did not work. He then saw Bauer playing with the paper man he had just made. Salute. Bauer was holding the paper man. She made the paper man perform a saluting gesture. Rocky D's body lifted its right hand by its own volition. He had no say in it. He was suddenly just like the paper man. He performed the saluting gesture. Rocky D's face changed. What? How is this possible? She has that control power. Isn't she a human girl? A human girl at that age should not have such wicked powers. Even with a powerful gene race, there is no way she could channel so much power without fault. She did not even combine with a gene race. This. What is going on? Rocky D now regretted his deeds. If he had not cut out his own silhouette for Bauer and given it to her, no matter how strong she was, she would have been unable to control him. Aside from himself and one of the twelve annihilation god spirits, he never thought there would be another being with the same type of power and powerful enough to control him. Even the god spirit from the Twelve Annihilation god spirits would have been unable to control him completely with his paper shape. Take a dump. Bauer moved the paper man to open its legs and squat into a pooping position. No. No. I am a gentleman. How could I perform such an embarrassing action? Rocky D shouted at the top of his lungs. His face turned red. He wanted to smack a wall, but he could not control his body. He looked like the paper man who was taking a dump. Chapter 3188 Blood Pulse Test Pick your nose. Crawl like a dog. Pee like a dog, Bauer was playing with the paper man. Rocky D was feeling grossly embarrassed. Why don't you just kill me? Rocky D madly shouted at Bauer. Uncle, why would I kill you? 
You are such a nice person. If you die, no one will be able to play with me. Bauer replied as she tilted her head and looked at Rocky D. Rocky D had asserted the position of a dog peeing as he madly replied, Who are you? There is no way you are Han Sin's daughter. He felt as if he had been well and truly tricked. She was such a powerful person, so how could she have been the daughter of a human? Uncle, your question is so strange, Bauer said as she looked at Rocky D with confusion. I am my father's daughter. That is impossible. You cannot be Han Sin's daughter. There is no way a human can bear a daughter like you. Rocky D could tell that Bauer was not lying. Despite how little he believed it, it appeared as if she was telling the truth. His heart jumped. He blinked and he said, I think Hansen must have told you a white lie. He is not a father. He is a fake one. That is complete and utter nonsense, Bauer said with a smile. I am my father's daughter. Rocky D quickly replied, It is easy to find out if you are Hansen's true daughter. All we have to do is conduct a test to find out the truth. How would we test that? Bauer asked with curiosity. There is a treasure behind the God Temple, Rocky D said. It is a treasure that belongs to the God Chaos Party. All you must do is put a drop of blood into that God item. The God item can then analyze your genes. It will trace you back to your very origin and find out where you were from. It can trace your ancestors. Really? That is interesting. After Bauer said that, she walked behind the God Temple. She was still holding the paper man. Rocky D followed Bauer behind the God Temple, but not by his own will. The two of them went to the back of the primary hall. They saw something that sort of looked like a well. A bronze tripod was in the center of the well. Although the tripod was only three feet high, it looked very old. The tripod had many mysterious symbols on it. Bauer looked at the bronze tripod and asked, Is that the treasure you were referring to? That is so simple. Rocky D quickly said, Do not look at it like that. Of course, it may look very normal, but this bronze tripod was made from the genes of a god. It has an incredible amount of power, and there is only of them in existence. You will never be able to find another one of these for as long as you live. Is it really that unique and good? Bauer asked as she looked at the tripod. Did you say I can find out who my family is through one drop of blood? Yes, Rocky D said. Although it cannot be like the three life stone that can find out three lives and three past lives, this tripod can find out the truth of the bloodline in your family. If you would like to join the God Chaos Party, you will have to use this tripod to find out. It has never been wrong through all the years it has been used. In that case, let's give it a try, Bauer said. She moved the paper man. Rocky D was pushed toward the bronze tripod. Rocky D was so scared that he shouted, No. 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 It was a shame he was being controlled by a paper man and unable to resist or move away. He walked in front of the bronze tripod. He reached out his finger and placed it on the bronze tripod. Bao picked up the small wooden sword Jian Bugu had given her. She used it to cut Rocky D's finger. That ordinary looking sword possessed a sword mind, and thus it was able to cut Rocky D's finger. For just one sword mind to hurt Rocky D's body like that. Not even Rocky D would have believed it was a wooden sword had he not been there to witness it. That asshole Jin Bu Gu. His sword mind is already at such a stage. Rocky D was shocked. A drop of blood oozed from Rocky D's finger and fell into the tripod. The symbols on the tripod suddenly lit up. Bauer's eyes opened wide as she looked upon the tripod in shock. The light on the tripod kept changing. It was like an endless font of light was now in operation. Not long later, a light shadow came out of the tripod. The light shadows were like a projector. It was like a hologram that created the shape of a body. It revealed Paper God, also known as Rocky D. It looked just like Rocky D minus the clothes he wore. Rocky D's body started to change. He became smaller and smaller. Then, his body started to change. In the end, he turned into a normal cat with a black shadow. It was the shadow of a cat, so it was not solid but it also had life. It was very weird. The shadow of the cat became smaller. It turned into a fat and cute, albeit small, cat. It then turned into a jean egg. Uncle, you are a cat. Bauer weirdly looked at Rocky D. I am not a cat. That was a shadow phantom. You do not understand what a shadow phantom is. Rocky D, who was feeling embarrassed, tried to correct Bauer. But it looks like a cat, Bauer said with honesty. Rocky D felt destroyed. His face turned red, but he kept his mouth shut. 
he did not want to talk to Bauer anymore. After Rocky D turned into a gene egg, the video stopped playing. The bronze tripod returned to normal. Bauer tilted her head as she asked, Why did I not see your mother and father? I'm a rare gene race that was born in a god pulse, Rocky D said. Of course, I do not have any parents. If you have parents, the bronze tripod will show them. Okay. Bauer had a brief time to think about it. She walked in front of the bronze tripod, reached out her finger, bit it, and let a drop of blood fall on it. Bauer knew she originally came out of a gourd, but she wanted to know if there was any other bloodline she was related to. She did not really want to find out whether or not she was Han Sin's daughter. Bauer's blood entered the bronze tripod. The bronze tripod started to glow. The symbols on the tripod started to glow like the sun. They started to melt. Rocky D's eyes went straight while watching this. He was the minister of the God Chaos Party. He had seen many of these tests before. He had seen rare gene races that turned into God Spirit gene races or even fallen annihilation God Spirits. Whenever he had tested it in the past, this had never happened before. The bronze tripod was burned into steel juice. It melted rapidly. Lots of red, bronze juice dripped. The moment the bronze tripod collapsed, the bronze tripod had a shadow. The light shadow formed in the air. The bronze tripod collapsed. There was boiling bronze juice everywhere as the shadow faded. Rocky D was frozen as he looked at the bronze tripod. His eyes widened and his lips started to quake. He had no idea what he had just seen. When he regained his composure, he looked at Bauer. His vocal cords had the shakes as he said, You. You. Rocky D is a sinner, so please forgive me. If Rocky D could have moved, he would have been kowtowing before Bauer. Chapter 3189 a name that cannot be spoken. Bauer blinked and looked at Rocky D. After a while, she asked, Do you know who I am? Yes. No, no, no. Rocky D was not making much sense. So, do you know me or not? Bauer asked with a frown. I am aware of your existence, but I have never seen you before, Rocky D quickly said. Oh, in that case, tell me who you think I am, Bauer said. She squinted her eyes as she peered at Rocky D. Rocky D displayed a wry smile as he said, I would not dare say to say it. Therefore, I will not say it. If I dare say your name, this world will be thrown into chaos. What is that supposed to mean? Bauer's eyes repeatedly blinked. You must believe that I, Rocky D, only obey you diligently, Rocky D said with sincerity. If you are willing for me to die, I will gladly die. I will die in your service with honor. I do not like the way you are talking to me now, Bauer said. If you speak to me like this again, I will tear this paper man in half. She held the paper man high up. It looked as if she was going to rip it up. Rocky D remained calm. If that can keep your secret, I am willing to give up my life for that cause. After that, Rocky D closed his eyes as if he was willingly ready to embrace a demise. Do you really think I am not capable of killing someone? Bauer's face looked dim. If my death can bring you pleasure, then the pleasure is all mine, Rocky D said with seriousness. Bauer stared at Rocky D for a bit. She then picked up the paper man and waved it in Rocky D's direction. Rocky D's body flew toward the paper man. His body grew smaller. He combined with the paper man. The paper man was just a silhouette, but it now had color and a face. It had become a colorful paper man. When you want to tell me, you can come and talk to me. Bauer looked rather annoyed. She pulled out a book and stuck Rocky D, the paper man, inside the pages of the book. After doing that, Bauer pushed the sunglasses on her face and said to herself, What is wrong with this guy? It really does look like he is not afraid to die. The dragon maid had received an order to wait outside Phone Castle and wait for Hansen's return. She eventually saw Hansen emerge from the castle, so she walked forward and casually said, Come here. Follow me if you wish to see Bauer. Sure. Hansen did not say anything else. He nodded and followed the dragon maid. The dragon maid opened a tunnel through space. She took Hansen with her to travel through it. They arrived at the paper god temple atop a mountain. You wait here. The dragon maid walked in front of the god temple and stopped. She bowed and shouted into the paper god temple, Mr. Minister, Hansen is here. After a while of waiting for a response, none came from. Rocky D. This made the dragon maid frown. She bowed again and said, Mr. Minister, I have brought Hansen here. Still, no one answered her. The paper door of the paper god temple opened. 
A cute little girl emerged from beyond it. Upon seeing Bower walk out, the dragon maid was given a fright. She quickly seemed to understand something. She was furious, so she grabbed Bower and shouted, What did you do to Mr. Minister? Beezy's tea. A wooden sword flew above Bower. It went in front of her. The wooden sword was ordinary, but the sword mind was so holy that it was like a god one could not dare to offend. It crushed the dragon maid and pinned her to the ground. She could not straighten her back. It felt like a terrifyingly heavy sword was crushing her. Bauer jumped into Han Sen's chest and complained, Dad, you were so slow. I was worried that I had come too soon and ruined your fun. Hansen smiled. Seeing Bauer safe and sound, he felt immeasurably relieved and asked, Where is Rocky D? He is here. Bauer opened the book she kept next to her chest. She took out Rocky D's paper form. This is Rocky D? Hansen looked at the paper man with shock. It did look like Rocky D. It was like a miniature version of him. It looked like a paper man that was drawn on top. What are you looking at? If it was not for Master Bauer, you would be dead. Rocky D felt furious to be looked at by Hansen. You weren't kidding, and he can speak. Hansen thought this was rather interesting. He held the head of the paper man and remarked how much it felt like paper. Rocky D felt very embarrassed, so he shouted, Let. Let. Let go of me. He was still trapped in paper form, so he could not fight back. Hansen lifted his head. Let go of Mr. Minister, the dragon maid madly shouted. She wanted to stand up, but the sword mind power made her bones crack. It looked as if she was going to break. She could not stand up. That is a very powerful sword mind. Mr. Jian is stronger than I thought. It is no wonder why he is regarded as the biggest swordsman in the Chain Kingdom. Hansen looked at the wooden sword in shock. The dragon maid's power was almost similar to Decapitation Queen but a wooden sword was able to keep her suppressed. The sword mind of its master must have been frightening. Hansen gave the paper man of Rocky D to Bauer and asked her with curiosity, how could he be like that? Bauer pushed her sunglasses and smiled. I simulated his power and used it back on himself. His powers were quite interesting. I forgot about that trick. Hansen only just remembered the treasure sunglasses she had. He did not expect the power of the sunglasses was effective even in the universe of kingdoms. Bauer looked strange. She told Hansen about her experience with Rocky D. Hansen was surprised to hear it. He looked at the paper man version of Rocky D and asked, Rocky D, do you know something about Bauer's history? If you tell me, I can let you go. Rocky D looked at him with disdain. He lifted his lips and said, You do not have the credentials needed to talk to me. Talk to my dad nicely. Bauer reached out her hand and squeezed Rocky D's face. Ow. Oh. Ow. Oh. Ow. Oh. Rocky D screamed. Whatever, Hansen said. Let's just go back. Bring Mr. Jian's wooden sword. I am sure it is very important to him, so we should do our best to return it to Mr. Jian. The wooden sword was an ordinary item, but the sword had. Jian Bugu's sword mind. It was like Jian Bugu's self-sword. Hansen did not understand why Jian Bugu would use a wooden sword for a self-sword. No matter how strong a sword mind was, it was very weak. If Mr. Jian encountered an enemy that was as strong as he was, the sword would be rendered useless. Bauer took back the wooden sword. The dragon maid was free. She turned into a big, black dragon and roared at Hansen and Bauer. Ping. Hansen gathered up power. He punched the dragon maid and sent her flying. The giant body was like a mountain that was shaking. Do not kill her. Rocky D shouted. Dad, just let her live, Bowa said with a blink of her eyes. Chapter 3190 Guessing Hansen and Bowa went to the Fong family castle. The dragon maid followed them from behind. She knew she would be unable to fight them, but her resolve had not been completely dissolved. Hansen was a bit worried. Instead of chasing the dragon maid away, he had allowed her to come back to the Fong family castle. He took the Rocky D paper man from Bauer and went into the garden. Rocky D, I have things I would like to tell you. Hansen put Rocky D on a stone table. He glanced at the dragon maid, who was staring at them intently. Rocky D moved his paper body. He was feeling a bit uncomfortable, but he still told the dragon maid, you can wait outside the garden. The dragon maid adhered to the command and waited outside the garden. Even from there, she still watched. After the dragon maid left, Hansen spoke to Rocky D. Rocky D, you seem to know something. Why don't you spill the beans? 
Rocky D patted himself on the chest and coldly replied, What makes you think you have what it takes to talk to me in such a capacity? I am Bauer's father, Hansen coldly said. Rocky D immediately jumped and said, You do not have what it takes. If you dare to say that you are Master Bauer's father, I will kill you. Hansen smiled. You cannot deny I was the one who raised her from a baby. Rocky D moved his lips, but he did not say anything. If you are not willing to say anything more, then how about I guess? Hansen asked with a smile. He had experienced far too many problems in his lifetime. He was confused about many things. The more time he had spent guessing, the more experience he had when it came to guessing. Upon seeing Rocky D not speak, Hansen started to talk to himself. You call her Master Bauer and are so polite to her. That must mean she has a higher position than you. That also means she is stronger than you. People like you would go and fight a god spirit. At the end of the day, you manage to be stronger and at a higher level than them. So, why would you treat a child like a master? Yet, you are. For that, there can only be one possibility. You and Bauer have some sort of connection, or perhaps you owe her a favor of some sort. Humph. Rocky D coldly grunted. He did not actually say anything. Hansen laughed and went on to say, No matter whether or not you owe her a favor or if you two are related, people like you would remember her. You would not forget her. There is no way you did not recognize her in the beginning, yet you did not recognize her in the beginning. It was not until you conducted the test did you change your approach to her. You obviously saw something in the test that enabled you to recognize her. Rocky D did not say anything. He merely coldly stared at Hansen. I heard Bawa say that the bronze tripod was a treasure of the god Chaos Party. It is an item that enables a member to test their blood, and there is only one such tool in existence. Hansen looked at Rocky D and said, But this bronze tripod is only able to test blood. It cannot determine one's past life. If it was like that, it would not be a reincarnation. You only saw Bauer in this life, and you only recognized who she was in this life. Why did you not recognize her in the beginning? You only recognized her after seeing Bauer's blood pulse light shadow. Hansen squinted and peered at Rocky D. He then asked, Do I need to keep talking? I do not know what you are talking about. Rocky D coldly replied. Hansen looked at Rocky D and said, Bauer is in danger. She is in big danger. Am I correct? Yes. If I were you, I would let her go. Let me and Bauer leave this place. Rocky D spoke the words in an ordinary tone of voice. I believe what you say is true. If I do not let Bauer leave and do not want you to return to your former self, what do you expect will happen? I think the God Chaos Party will not let you, Mr. Minister simply vanish and disappear from the world. Rocky D's heart jumped. Before he spoke again, Hansen said, I and Bauer are like father and daughter. It does not matter whether you accept that fact or not. I will not allow her to leave my side. I do not think Bauer will want to leave my side either. You do not have the power to change that. So, if you really are standing on Bauer's side, I think there is a thing or two you can tell me. This time, Rocky D did not deny things. He remained silent but did not speak. His eyes lingered on Hans Senator after a while, he said. You need to know that if Master Bauer's identity is revealed, there will be a disaster that will shake the sky. I cannot hold it, and you cannot hold it. You should really tell me who she is, Hans Sin said. That is the only way we can be prepared, right? Rocky D shook his head. I cannot tell you her name, and I cannot disclose her history. If I tell you these things the universe will be thrown upside down. That seems really serious. Hansen looked at Rocky D and asked, there has to be something you can tell me, right? Rocky D hesitated and said, hide her. Do not let the god. Spirits realize who she really is. Do not let the god chaos party find her, or there will be a grand disaster. I cannot put her in hiding forever, Hansen coldly said. Bawa will not agree with that. Even if she did agree with it, I would not accept that. At least not now, Rockdy said. You need to wait until she grows up. Maybe then she can. How far must she develop? Must she become reboot class? Hansen asked as a test. I do not know, Rocky D said. He looked weird as he spoke. Master Bowers limit is not something we can guess or even try to understand. Hansen stared at Rocky D and said, Fine. This is the last question. Aside from you, are there any other creatures that can reveal Bowers identity? Yes. Or maybe there are none, Rocky D weirdly said. Be clearer. 
Hansen frowned. Rocky D sighed and said, Back in the day, perhaps some people might have been able to tell. These days, I cannot even be sure if those guys are alive. Even if they were, I cannot be certain they would notice. If Master Bauer did a test like the bronze tripod again, people might recognize something. According to your theory, Bauer is safe. Hansen felt a bit relieved. If I was unable to recognize who she was in the first place, I doubt there are many in this world that can do what I could not, Rocky D said with seriousness. Still, it would be best for her not to be flaunted around, just in case. I understand, Hansen said. You should go. The restrictions on your body can now be removed. I don't think you need Bauer to undo the spell put on you. Are you really letting me go? Rocky D looked shocked. Keeping you here is sure to attract more trouble, Hansen casually said. I do not want to kill you. Therefore, I will just choose to let you go. Are you not afraid that I will leak the secrets about Master Bauer? Rocky D asked. I am afraid, but I do not think you will. After Bauer left, you could have run, but you didn't. Hansen smiled. Humph. Rocky D coldly grunted. He twisted the paper and jumped. In the air, he became his real self again. He reached out the paper man in his hand to Hans Sr. Give this paper man to Master Bauer. If she needs it, she only has to use the paper man, and I will lend her my assistance. After that, Rocky D threw the paper man at Hans and like a card. He turned around and left the garden, taking the dragon maid with him. Chapter 3191 God Fight Reward Before the space tunnel closed for their departure, Rocky D turned around and asked Hansen, Do you not think breaking the world is awesome? There is strength in between breaking the world, and you just broke the world. Not many elites can kill you, but there are still one or two that might. If I were you, I would let Master Bauer go with me. I am not going to hand my daughter over to anybody, Hansen calmly said. I will not let anyone hurt her. Rocky D grunted coldly. He did not turn his head as he left through the space tunnel. Seeing the space tunnel shut down, Hansen said to himself, If this really is how I think it is, then this will all be a great deal of trouble. Hansen entered the top four rounds of fights, and Bauer joined in two. Their luck wasn't too shabby either. They were not pitted against each other. They had to fight the others who were also in the top four. Hansen was quite surprised by the turnout. In their semi-final matches, neither Hansen's nor Bauer's opponent showed up. They had given up and quit. It was the most boring set of semi-finals ever witnessed, and the same was going to hold true for the finale. The semi-finals did not happen, and the finals weren't going to depict a grand bout either. Bauer immediately quit, which enabled Hansen to achieve the number one rank in the god fights. The other two people were very famous in the Geno universe. As for them conceding, people did not say much about it. Everyone knew that fighting Hansen was likely futile, so everyone thought they too would quit if they were in their shoes. The same was true for going up against Bauer. After all, they had even managed to make the god spirits break the rules. It would have been weird for them to actually consider fighting the pair. No one wanted to risk their lives in a battle with such an unfair environment. If they entered the space battleground, they might not have been able to make it out alive even if they conceded. If they did not concede, they could not use god spirit gene races. If they used them, they would be punished by the god spirits they had pledged their loyalty to. If they did not use them and could not fight Dollar and Ingot, it would have been a fight in which they were practically throwing themselves into the furnace. It was a death wish. Even stupid people knew the best course of action. Hansen was the most dishonorable winner in the history of the god fights, but no one questioned his claim to be a victor and the might that secured him the number one position. Although he had won without fighting, Hansen felt good about it. He did not have time to waste concerning himself about whether or not it was right to win the god fights without battling. All he cared about were the results. When Hansen earned first place in the god fights, a light fired into the space battleground. It landed on Hansen, making his body disappear. Hansen did not fight back. It was a teleportation light. It did not harm him. Hansen's vision constantly flashed. When he was able to see again, he realized he was inside a giant god hall. The god halls were the most obvious things to recognize. There was a light in the center that was very old and mysterious. The light had small lights. There had to have at least been 10,000 of them. Hansen was no stranger to these lanterns. The 10,000 lanterns were race lanterns. Every race lantern had the race's name on it. The first was still the very high. Hansen carefully looked at the race lanterns. He did not, 
Strangely enough, see a human race lantern. Obviously, the humans had yet to light up their lanterns. The elusive god was sitting on the god throne of the god hall. Hansen was very familiar with that bloke. Now, he should have called him God Hall Master, the strongest reboot god spirit in the universe. It is impossible for humans to light up a lantern for themselves, God Hall leader coldly said. I have already told you that humans should not exist in the Geno universe. Their existence makes sense, Hansen said with a laugh. If humans already exist in the Geno universe, why can we not light up a lantern? The fact you can't means you can't, God Hall leader said. There is no why. You just can't. If humans really did light up a lantern in the Geno universe, let's not mention the others for a moment. But even God spirits like me would not ignore such an event. Letting the crystallizes light a lantern is the best we can do. Fine. I don't really care about humans lighting up lanterns, anyway. The reward for coming first in the God fights should be mine now, shouldn't it? Hansen smiled at God Hall Leader as he spoke. Fine. God Hall Leader did not mention anything about Hansen breaking the rules again. He agreed with him rather quickly. He lobbed the gene egg at Hans Senator it landed in his hands. God Hall Leader smiled at Hans Senator he looked at him as he said, That is a rare gene egg. It is a Sheen holy turtle. Are you satisfied now? I thought you said the number one would be able to pick which rare gene egg he wanted. Can I not be given a turtle? Hansen looked at the pitch black thing. It looked very average. Okay. God Hall leader clapped his hands. A wheel of fortune appeared in front of Hansen. Hansen looked at the wheel of fortune as he asked, How are the slices all so empty? How am I supposed to know what I am going to get? God Hall leader laughed. You just spin it. No matter which slice you get, I will write down Shin Holy Turtle. If you do that, then why did you need a wheel of fortune for it? Hansen looked at God Hall leader with an icy expression. What is important is that it can make you feel like you are in control. It can satisfy and provide your heart with a bit of a thrill. God Hall leader pointed at the wheel and said, Hurry up and spin the thing. What is the point of spinning? Do you think I am that free? Hansen's eyes twitched as he spoke. Okay, that will save you some time. God Hall leader admired Hansen's ability to understand so much. He clapped his hands. The big wheel of fortune disappeared. Usually, you do not need to come here to claim your reward. God Hall Leader said as he smiled at Han Sr. Today, I asked you to come because there is something that I would like to bend your ear for. I'm busy. I still have my kids to feed. Why don't we talk about this another time? He did not believe God Hall Leader was so willing to just invite him in for telling stories. That is fine by me, God Hall Leader said, acting as if he did not care. I suppose the extinction of humanity is no big deal. What is going on? Hansen had to concede. God Hall leader asked, You have been to Outer Sky where the very high roam, correct? You know what that place is like. I have heard it resides in a zone between the real world and the anti-material world, Hansen said. I never did find out if there was any validity to the claims. God Hall leader nodded. Yes. Outer Sky really is a buffer zone that resides between the real world and the anti-material world. There should not be any glitches in a buffer zone like that, such as the lake that resides in Outer Sky. It is an outright crack between the real world and anti-material worlds. That is why people can fish up some stuff from that anti-material lake. Hansen had already been able to guess that much. He had always been curious to learn about why a glitch like that existed. God Hall leader seemed to see what Hansen was thinking. He sighed and said, This has something to do with God Chaos Party and the war against the God Spirits. To put it simply, after a big fight and a reboot, the universe did not totally recover. There are many glitches in it now. That is why people like you and Qin Shio are allowed to exist. You reincarnate between the real world and the anti-material world. That is why there are spirits like Moon God and Zhou Dong Lai. They carry memories over from a past life. You are not going to make me fix those glitches, are you? Hansen quickly asked. I don't have the power to do that. God Hall leader rolled his eyes. I know you don't have that power. The God Chaos Party is in a buffer zone. They are trying to open a path through the real world and the anti-material world. Although they have not yet succeeded in doing so, it would be best if their antics were put to an end. Therefore, after saying that, God Hall leader smiled and looked at Hansen. Chapter 3192, God Chaos Party Old Nest When Hansen returned to the Fong family castle, he felt a bit depressed. The Xian Holy Turtle was good stuff. 
It was a rare gene race. It was just that it was a newborn baby that had recently hatched. It had a scary level of defense. After combining with it, one had a Xian holy body. It enabled the body's strength to increase and gave it a shakeback power. The Xian holy turtle was good at everything. The only problem was the fact the Xian holy turtle used earth elemental powers. It did not go well with the Dong Xian Sutra or Jade Skin. Therefore, it could not be used with the reverse gene races of those two skills. Hansen was wondering if God Hall Leader was enacting payback for his behavior in the God fights. While giving him a decent reward might have seemed great, it was basically God Hall Leader giving him a gene race Hansen had no use for. It made Hansen feel terrible. It looks like I will have to go to that buffer zone. Otherwise, getting rare gene races will be too difficult, Hansen said with a sigh. He still used the black crystal armor to evolve the Xian Holy Turtle. Although he could not use it as a reverse gene race, it was still Hansen's first rare gene race. If he was able to find a God Spirit Blood Pulse that went well with it, he could level it up as a God Spirit gene race. It would at least be useful in some capacity. Seeing the Xian Holy Turtle in his Sea of Souls swallow the black crystal armor, it turned into a black orb. Hansen remembered the things God Hall Leader told him. According to the theories of God Hall Leader, the powers to break the world were called Break World. Not many elites were actually able to use Break World. God Chaos Party's leader was one such individual, and Qin Xian was barely half of that. But others couldn't. The reason Qin Xiao was only half of that was that he used a glitch in the world to access the Geno universe. He did not use his own power to accomplish that. Hansen was unable to break the world. The reason he was able to go to the universe of kingdoms was because of World God King's power. The Super God Spirit Mode was strong, but he could not use it to break into another world. Hansen had only just reached the Break World level. He was practically a beginner. He was still far away from the real Break World level. In fact, Hansen was not just able to break the world. Even God Chaos Party's leader, who was the vice president of the God Chaos Party in the past, was unable to reach a break world level. When there was a big fight and the universe had to be rebooted, the world was fractured with glitches. Now, God Chaos Party's leader was planning to use those glitches to make a tunnel that would enable access to the other universe. Hansen did not know how forging a path between the worlds would benefit the God Chaos Party, so he asked about it. God Hall leader looked at Hansen, licked his lips, and said, The two are made from opposites. To the Geno universe, the universe of kingdoms is the anti-material world. To the universe of kingdoms, the Geno universe is the anti-material world. That means to one universe, the other can be considered hell. When the tunnel between both worlds opens, the creatures of these two universes can go between the universes. That would be like demons from hell crawling into the ordinary world. The two universes would be in chaos. Hansen rubbed his nose. He knew God Hall Leader meant he was a demon, and he had nothing to defend himself against that claim. Since he had been in the universe of kingdoms, he hadn't exactly done anything positive. God Hall Leader also told Hans and the creatures of the universe of kingdoms would have an extremely hard time when trying to practice break world powers. If the two worlds were to be opened, there would be many creatures like Hansen or Qin Xiao appearing who could easily learn break world powers. The God Chaos Party wanted to absorb those creatures. If that situation did come to pass, there would be too many break world people appearing. Even God spirits would be unable to maintain control of the world. The aftermath would undoubtedly be something quite severe. Fortunately, for now, the world had glitches. Breaking the worlds would not be easy. The God Chaos Party was only in the initial stages of planning. Putting aside if it would work, if they wanted to break through it and did work, it would take a billion years to punch through a hole in the fabric of the universe. The God Hall leader did not really expect Hansen to be capable of destroying the God Chaos Party. He only wanted Hansen to give the God Chaos Party some trouble. After rebooting, the two universes' buffer zones had been torn to shreds. Each layer did not connect. The outer sky, which belonged to the very high, was just one layer. It was the one that was the closest to the Geno universe. There were 33 buffer zones in existence, similar to that of the outer sky. They were in places God's spirits were unable to occupy. It was dangerous for God's spirits to venture to such places. Because the two universes had a space between them, the Geno Hall and the God Temple Palaces would be unable to work. 
If the god spirits died there, they would be unable to respawn in their god temples. According to the news he had received in the past, the god Chaos Party had broken seven layers near the universe of kingdoms. It would still take them a long time to break through the rest. Now, the seven layers were all occupied by the god Chaos Party. If god spirits entered such a place, they would have to be careful. It had been a long time since news of their progress had been received. God Hall Leader was saying he wanted Hansen to get in there and kill as many members of the God Chaos Party as he was able to. If he was unable to kill them, he could at least harvest some information. That way, he could find out how many layers the God Chaos Party had managed to break through. God Hall Leader promised that if Hansen delivered him accurate news, he could give Hansen a very special and rare gene race. Apparently, Hansen was going to love it. It was a tempting proposition, but the territory of the God Chaos Party was not the sort of place one could freely waltz into. The only thing Hansen had on his side was that the two universes' powers would not be suppressed when inside a buffer zone. By being there, Hansen could use all of his powers and not be restricted. Of course, what tempted Hansen even more was the God Temples of the God Chaos Party's members. By destroying God Temples, he could get more God Bases. No one wanted fewer God Bases. Hansen had asked God Hall Leader why the members of the God Chaos Party were not called God Spirits despite them having God Temples and God Bases. The God Hall Leader did not answer him. He just told Hansen how to get there. Hansen was interested to see it. Before that, he wanted to see the Qin Kingdom's Alpha Temple. The Qin Kingdom must have had people who could break the world. Let's not mention anyone else, but Jian Bugu must have been a break world elite. My powers are restricted by the universe. Breaking an Alpha Temple would be difficult. Hansen kept thinking. He still planned on sneaking into the Alpha Temple to have a look. To prevent trouble pursuing him, Hansen went looking for Qin Bai. He planned to take Qin Bai with him to the Alpha Temple. Having the Qin Kingdom's future King Qin Bai there could make a big problem become a very small problem if he was discovered. He could turn a very small problem into not a problem at all. He could avoid a lot of unnecessary troubles. Qin Bai, is Bauer at home? When Qin Bai went to the Fong family castle, he did not go inside. He asked his men to bring Hansen out. He looked angry. I am playing in the garden with Fong Yin Yin, Hansen said with a smile. If the crown prince wants her, then I can go get her. No, no, no. Qin Bai's face turned white as he pulled Hansen. Chapter 3193 Destiny Well Qin Bai pulled Hansen away from the doors of the Fong family castle and asked, Hansen, why have you come looking for me? Hansen looked at Qin Bai as he asked, Mr. Crown Prince, have you been to the Alpha Temple? Of course, I have been there. Every year, when we perform sacrifices, we have to kneel for half the day. We have to kowtow and bow. It is also very annoying. Qin Bai looked as if he did not have many fond memories of his trips to the Alpha Temple. He looked like he hated the place quite a bit. He strangely asked, Why are you asking me about it? Hansen laughed and said, I have heard there is a very powerful treasure in the Alpha Temple. Do you know what it is, Crown Prince? What are you talking about? How can a place like the Alpha Temple have great treasure? It is just a temple with an Alpha statue inside it and a few tools for sacrifices, of course. There is nothing else there. So why would there be treasure? Qin Bai joined the sacrifices every year. He knew what was inside the Alpha Temple. Aside from these things, are you sure there is nothing? When Hansen heard that, he felt disappointed. If Qin Shou really had put Wanner's dead body inside the Alpha Temple, there should have been some kind of evidence. There couldn't be nothing at all. Qin Bai thought for a bit and said, There are some weird things, but they are not treasures. For instance, there is a well there. What kind of well? Hansen's eyes suddenly brightened. After thinking a moment, Qin Bai said, The Alpha Temple has one main and two subhalls. There are three halls in total. The right hall features an old well. It is octagon-shaped. The well has the Alpha's writing on it. He wrote down the word destiny. Therefore, the well is called destiny well. People frequently call it the country well. After pausing, Qin Bai looked around and saw that nobody was around. He quietly told Hansen, I have heard that the well can be quite creepy. There is a chain thicker than an arm on the platform. The chain leads all the way down the well. I heard that the chains have locked up a suppressed pulse god beast from the Qin kingdom. I heard these stories when I was a young boy. The suppressed pulse god beast helped the Qin kingdom suppress luck. 
It has kept the Qin kingdom going for 1,000 autumns and 10,000 generations and made the kingdom rich forever. After Hansen heard that, he was so happy, he thought, if Wanner's body is in the Alpha Temple, it will probably be in the destiny. Well, after thinking about it, Hansen told Qin Bai, I have heard about the powerful treasure residing inside Destiny Well. Qin Bai's head shook like a drum. Impossible. I do not know if Destiny Well has a suppressed pulse god beast, but that is an odd place to put treasure. The legends claim that the Alpha put the Qin kingdom in a very good situation. In the second generation, it was said the Alpha's son was very naughty. During a sacrifice, he decided to answer the call of nature right inside Destiny Well. Afterward, the Qin kingdom's fortune soured. It was bad for many years. It almost destroyed the kingdom. It was all because of that incident. As a result, all the kings used this story to educate their family members. They must not do anything bad to the Destiny Well. If it was not for having to attend ritual sacrifice, I'd never visit the Alpha Temple of my own volition. Although Qin Bai was a bit naughty and spoiled, there were limits to his own tenacity. Han Sen, you are not planning on doing anything in the Destiny Well, are you? I would advise you to put those thoughts to bed right now. Qin Bai looked around and pulled Hansen into a corner. He quickly said, You must not go there. There are very scary elites guarding there. They are the greatest defenders of the Qin Kingdom. Even if Jade Wall City was broken, you could not infiltrate that one zone. Without the permission of my father, not even I can visit there freely. You are strong, but if you went there alone, not even you would make it back. Qin Bai was sincerely looking out for Han Sen's best interest. He would not have told Han Sen the secrets of the temple if he did not want what was best for him. Oh, what kind of scary characters? Han Sen asked. Qin Bai shook his head. I am not entirely sure. That is just what my father told me. When I have been by Destiny Well, I have never seen anyone guarding the place. I am fairly sure it is the truth. What father tells me is never incorrect, and he never lets me tell anyone else about this stuff. He says that if I ever encounter a crisis in which I cannot solve and my life is threatened, all I must do is escape to the Alpha Temple. Once there, I can find help and someone to save me. Hearing Qin Bai say that, Han Sen was sure there was something unusual about the Alpha Temple. Even if it was not Wanner's body, it likely had something important to do with the Qin Kingdom. The Alpha Temple has the Qin Kingdom's strongest guardians. If I forced entry, it might end up bad for me. Although Hansen was strong, under the suppression of the world's rules, he was not sure if he had what it took to fend off the Qin kingdom if it entirely turned against him. This is giving me a headache. In Hansen's heart, he was feeling a bit depressed. Hansen, if you really want to look at destiny well, I can take you there during a time of sacrifice, Qin Bai said. Outside of those times, it is not wise to visit. Hansen's eyes looked bright as he asked Qin Bai, when the next sacrifice rolls around, can you take me there? Yes, I can. Qin Bai smiled and said, There will only be royals, officers, and chosen people that are allowed to go in. If you would like to enter, you can disguise yourself as my servant. Are your servants expected to be eunuchs? Hansen asked with a weird look. They are eunuchs, Qin Bai answered with a nod. Hansen did not want to become a eunuch. Aside from that, there did not seem to be another way to get close to Destiny Well. It was the only thing he could do. He told Qin Bai that the next time there was a sacrifice, he wanted to be taken along. For now, Hansen gave up on the plans of infiltrating the Qin Kingdom's Alpha Temple. Hansen, Thousand Mile Reach and Teacher Jia have not stopped being mean to me. My days have been poor. Do you think there is a way in which they might stop being so mean to me? Qin Bai looked at Hansen as if he was a beacon of hope. They are being harsh because they want you to be good, Hansen said with a smile. You only need to do your homework. Do that and you will be fine. You say that like it is easy, Qin Bai said while he cried. There are six teachers and a dozen nannies. There are so many of them teaching me. I have to learn everything. If I don't eat or sleep, it is likely I still wouldn't learn it all before the day I die. Hansen pitted Qin Bai. He loved to fool around, but he was born to a royal family. Furthermore, he was the only successor. He could tell how much the Qin Kingdom King wanted him to be good before he ascended. Normal people would just control how to use gene races. Qin Bai was the Qin Kingdom's future king. Controlling gene races was not enough. There was too much he had to learn. After thinking a moment, Hansen had an idea. How about this? I have been planning a trip recently. 
Why don't you go to the king and ask for permission to join me on this trip to learn? Chapter 3194 Traveling and Studying When Chinbai heard what he said, he developed a wry smile and replied, It is very hard for me to leave the palace for any duration of time. I always have to come up with excuses to leave the palace and see you. Why would my father allow me to travel and study with you? Just give it a go, Hansen said with a smile. Perhaps your father might agree. By the way, when you ask your father, you can tell him that Mr. Jian is going too. I would not dare tell my father something like that, Chin Bai said with a sigh. He's going to say I am a loser. If you give it a go, you might have a chance, Hansen said with a tilt of his head. You can never know anything unless you try, so why not? I have given you the option. It is up to you if you want to act on it. What do you think the percentage of this working is? Chin Bai asked with a gnash of his teeth. I would say there is a 50% chance, Hansen casually said. Whatever happened before always meant there was still a 50% chance. When Chinbai heard that, he felt excited. If there is a 50% chance, I will risk getting told off. Let's go give it a shot. After sending Chinbai on his way, Hansen returned to the castle. He saw Bao playing with a wooden sword. It was the same one Jian Bugu had given her. Did I not ask you to give it back to Mr. Jian? Hansen asked with curiosity. Bao said, Mr. Jian said he didn't need it. He said it was a gift for me, so I don't have to give it back. Hansen remained silent. He then walked to Mr. Jian's room. Hansen knocked on the door. Mr. Jian's voice soon sounded from beyond. The door is not locked, so please come in. Hansen pushed the door and went in. He saw Mr. Jian was holding a needle and stitching up clothes. He thought it was weird. He was the Qin Kingdom's first elite. He was a person who could use a sword mind to suppress a god's spirit. Strangely, he was now looking like a family man. Please sit, Mr. Mr. Jian said. He kept fixing clothes as he spoke. Mr. Jian, I am planning a long-distance trip, Hansen said with seriousness. Would you be willing to come with me? You bought me as a slave, so you can tell me to do whatever you want, Jian Bu Gu flippantly said. I am going to a place called 33 Days, Hansen said to Jian Bu Gu while he looked at him. I am sure it is a place that you are no stranger to. Jin Bu Gu put down his needle, looked at Hansen, and asked, Will you be taking Qin by the 33 days? 33 days is dangerous, but I can look after myself, Hansen casually said. There is no need to worry about that. Qin Bai is the Qin Kingdom's crown prince. He is the future of the Qin Kingdom. He should experience more. It will only bring him goodness. It will not be anything bad. What do you think, Mr. Jin? Although you might be able to say that, that place is too dangerous, Jian Bugu said. I have been through seven skies and almost died. Plus, you have a rivalry with the God Chaos Party. Going there is like a lamb waltzing up to the slaughter. Mister, if you have been, I am sure you must know that place relatively well, Hansen said with a smile. I have never been there before. Would you mind introducing me? Jian Bugu tried to remember the locale. Seven skies is for fallen people. They obey the evil gods of the God Chaos Party. That place is different from the universe of kingdoms. Fallen humans and gene races are all full of hatred there, and they are under the effect of the mysterious powers of 33 days. Humans and gene races undergo scary changes in that place. You have seen what Rocky D is capable of. If you have, then you should know how scary the gene races there might be. Aside from that, there are many other scary things there. Even God spirits can die in that place, and we are talking about Qin Bai. Jian Bugu made an oath not to care about the Qin Kingdom, but he was from there. His heart still cared about the Qin Kingdom. There is no need to worry about my problems with the God Chaos Party. I have a way to sort things out, and it will not affect this trip. After pausing, Hansen said, Plus, this time I want to see one sky. I will not go deep. I do not think there will be many dangers. It would be fantastic if you could go so you could watch out for Qin Bai. Jian Bugu looked at Hansen but he did not say anything. His eyes looked weird. I said my life is indebted to you. You can ask me to do anything your heart desires. In that case, please ready yourself, Hansen said. It does not matter if Chin Bai comes or not, but you and I are still leaving come tomorrow. He left after speaking. That night, someone broke into the Fong family castle. They put something down in Jian Bugu's room. Jian Bugu left the Fong family castle. He went out in the middle of the night. It was unknown where he went. Hansen saw everything, but he learned nothing the next day, 
Hansen heard Chin Bai's happy voice call out, Hansen, where are you? Why are you not up? Come and pack. We have to go. Why are you so early? Hansen yawned and emerged from his room. He saw Chin Bai looking very excited. He knew Chin Jinjin had permitted him to go on the journey. Hansen, you are a god. Father did not agree right away. After I mentioned Mr. Jian, as you said to do, father immediately acted differently. His determination to not permit me to go was weakened. He did not fully agree either. At first, I thought it failed. This morning, my father told Thousand Mile Reach that I would be allowed to travel with you. Chin Bai looked at Hansen with sheer admiration. As I expected, Hansen blushed and pretended to gasp. Chin Bai wanted to say something, but Bauer walked in. He immediately hid behind Hans Senator. He forced a smile and said, Bauer, hello. Crown Prince, hello, Bauer said with a blink of her eyes. It has been a while since we played chess together. Why don't we play some? No. No, Chin Bai's face had turned white. He shook his head and said, I have stuff to do with Hans Senator. I can't play chess today. Perhaps next time? Bauer, have you packed your things? Hansen asked while doing his best not to laugh. Bauer lowered her head. Her left hand held the small flying fish whereas her right hand had small cat in it. She nodded and said, I have packed. When Chin Bai heard that, his face changed. In shock, he said, Bauer is so young. Are we studying together? Traveling is better than studying books, Hansen said with a smile. It will be nice to have her learn something new too. Bauer did not speak. She looked at Chin Bai as if she was smiling but she was not smiling. Chin Bai now regretted his decision to come. If he knew that Demon Child was going, he would not have been so excited. Chin Bai made up his mind that he was not going to do anything to invoke her ire. He would not promise to play chess with her either. Everyone was packed and ready to go. Before they departed the Fong family castle, they saw a man and a woman waiting outside. Chin Bai looked and noticed it was his teacher, Thousand Mile Reach, whom he admired. The other was Jia Shirjin. He knew something bad must have happened. Thousand Mile Reach and Jia Shirjin bowed to Han Sen, but they both looked at the small flying fish Bauer was holding. The small flying fish had a bit of notoriety. After all, it had recently shocked the universe. Everyone knew about it. It was only Chin Bai who did not fight or watch the fights who did not know about the small flying fish. Everyone else knew. Thousand Mile Reach said, Mr. Han, the king has asked us to accompany Mr. Crown Prince on your journey. Will this disturb you? Chin Bai's face immediately collapsed. Chapter 3195 Soldier Weapon Sky Even the universe's buffer zones were places ordinary people could not go. Hansen used break world powers at a spot God Hall leader told him to go to gain access. When he did as he was instructed, he created a space tunnel. He then took many people inside. Everyone was shocked by what they saw. It was so huge that one could not imagine it. All kinds of big, small, strange, and weird weaponry were strewn about all over the place, including knives, lances, swords, halberds, axes, onos, hooks, tridents, arrows, shields, knives, hammers. They were looking at a forest of weapons that reached far into the distance. It was further than the eye could see. The whole place was full of weapons. There were knives so big that they were like little mountains. There were some godly lances high up in the sky that could easily kill. There were rotten knives and swords. There were bronze, steel, wood, and stone weapons. The weapons were made from all sorts of materials, had countless types of textures, and were many different shapes. Jia Shirjin and Thousand Mile Reach had heard stories about this place. This was the first time they had seen the place. Jia Shirjin was utterly flabbergasted. The legends claim the first sky is Soldier Knife Sky. It is heaven for weapons. It is true. Thousand Mile Reach looked at the ocean of weapons with shock and sighed. Chin Bai did not look overjoyed on the way there, but he was now looking surprised. He asked, Are the weapons here real? Can you kill people with them? Thousand Mile Reach said, 33 days is better than the universe because this place is not hampered by the rules of the universe. You cannot use the rules and theories of the big universe to explain anything here. In Soldier Knife Sky, all the weapons are like the universe's flowers, grasses, trees, and woods. They have lives and souls of their own. Unless they are willing to follow you on your departure, they will become dust if you try to force them out. After pausing, Thousand Mile Reach added, If they are willing to follow you after you take them away from here, 
they can serve you as brilliant weapons. Of course, these weapons are like ordinary flowers, grasses, woods, and trees. There are different species. Their qualities and powers are different. Most of them would be ordinary weapons. They would be like Baron or Viscount class weapons in the Qin Kingdom. That is not too bad, Qin Bai naively said. If we can ship a lot of them back, the armies of our kingdom would never have to worry about a weapon shortage. It is not that easy, Thousand Mile Reach said. Let's not mention the fact that ordinary people can't enter the Solder Knife Sky Realm. But even if they could, they could only take a weapon one by one. If we force them out, most of them will become dust. You cannot take them all. Plus, some of these weapons have scary existences. Their powers can be scarier than those of a god spirit. Even if you could take them back, if you shock them, you might not stay alive to even start doing that. Does that mean these weapons are actually gene races? Hansen asked. You might say that, but these weapons are different from ordinary gene races, Thousand Mile Reach said after a brief think. For starters, they are not in egg mode. They cannot have a god spirit mark. They are only half weapons and half gene races, so they cannot move by themselves. Even while they are asleep, they will only wake up when pulled out point eleven. If I can pull out a weapon that is as good as a god spirit, does that mean we can have a god weapon? Shinbai was showing a lot of interest. He looked at the weapons around him. He seemed to really want to give it a go. If you can get the approval of a weapon that can work, Thousand Mile Reach said with a streak of seriousness. It would be best not to try that. If you do not get the approval of a weapon and pull it out, it might result in a fighting scene. If you lose, it will self-destruct and turn into dust. It won't allow itself to be used by people. I see. Chinbai shrugged and gave up the whole idea of obtaining a new weapon. God weapons were great, but Chinbai did not think they were anything fun. He had some at home already, so there was no need for him to risk his life for any of these. Hansen did not say anything. He looked around. He was quite interested in the weapons he saw. If there was a powerful weapon that was like a god spirit, he would not mind pulling some out to try. The weapons were all asleep. One could not tell if one was good or if one was bad from their image alone. On top of that, there were too many of them. He could not go and check out all of them. If he wanted to try and do that, he'd die of old age. Vowis' interest was far greater. She ran to a little gem-like sword that was sunk into the ground. She reached her hands out to pick it up. Careful. Thousand Mile Reach and Jia Shurjan exclaimed with shock. When Bauer pulled out the Emerald Short Sword, the Emerald Short Sword made a crunchy sword sound. It flew from Bauer's hands. Thousand Mile Reach and Jia Shurjan felt nervous. They were going to save her, but they recognized the small flying fish and knew how strong that little critter was. Still, they did not think Bauer, who was just a kid, possessed that much power. If the small flying fish did not react next to Bauer, she would be in danger. Before they could move, they heard Bauer say, Turn around. The small, emerald sword listened to her. It circled Bauer and drew a circle for her. Bauer thought it was very funny. She waved at the green, gem-like short sword that was flying around. She was having a lot of fun with it. She behaved like it was not that fun. Bauer was holding the emerald short sword in one hand. It looked like it had many pieces of broken emerald all over it. She pulled them all out. Suddenly, there were thirty to forty emerald short swords. Thousand Mile Reach and Jia Shurjin were shocked. They wanted to stop her, but Hansen did not say anything. They bit their tongues and did not say what they wished to. The way she was pulling them out made it seem that if there was one emerald short sword that did not listen, Bauer would be in danger. They were prepared for something to happen, so they were ready to save her at any moment. The emerald short swords all adhered to Bauer's will. None of them rejected her. After Bauer pulled them all out, all the emerald short swords listened to her commands. They turned into a human shape. Next, they formed the shape of the Chinese character for Big. They flew around in the air like soldiers learning a formation. Chinbai thought this was really funny. He thought, it looks like Thousand Mile Reach is just bluffing people. Bauer has pulled out so many, yet she is fine. All of these things must be really easy to pull out. I am going to get one. Chin Bai watched the group of emerald short swords being controlled by Bauer with ease. It was funny. He could not help himself from trying to do the same. He looked around and thought about which would be best for him to pick up. Mr. Crown Prince, you have to be careful, Thousand Mile Reach quickly said. I know, Chin Bai said in agreement. 
he did not keep it in mind. He locked onto a three-foot-long diamond great sword that was taller than him. Chin Bia thought, Bower is so small, so it makes sense that she draws short swords. I am a crown prince. I need a big one to look cool. He walked toward the diamond great sword. Chapter 3196 Pulling Out a Sword Mr. Crown Prince, let's summon a gene race to protect your body before you draw the sword of your choice. Thousand Mile Reach and Jia Shurjin did not delay. One went left, and one went right. They followed Qin Bai, ready to save him the moment he needed to be saved. There is no need. Qin Bai walked up to the big sword. He reached his hand out to touch the sword's grip, but it was too high. After he touched the handle, he could not use any strength. Seeing that the big great sword had a blunted blade, Qin Bai used his body to hold the sword and pull it. The scared thousand mile reach and Jia Shurjin knew that with this kind of pulling, assuming the great sword did not approve of Qin Bai, it would attack Qin Bai's body. He would not be given any time to react. The two of them wanted to stop that from happening, but Qin Bai had already pulled the diamond great sword out. Suddenly, there was a buzzing sound. The great sword exploded with a sharp sword light. It broke Qin Bai's armor, dyeing his armor with blood. Jia Shurjin's reactions were blisteringly quick. She fired out a lightning-like sword light to send the great sword flying away. Thousand Mile Reach flew and grabbed Qin Bai. He immediately examined Qin Bai's wounds. Fortunately, Jia Shurjin's reactions had been fast enough. Before the great sword could strike Qin Bai's ribcage, it had only damaged his skin. Jia Shurjin unleashed another sword light to cut the diamond great sword in half. After the diamond great sword was broken, it self-destructed. It turned into a mushroom cloud until it fizzed away into dust. If Jia Shurjin had hit the great sword while Qin Bai was holding it, it would have blown Qin Bai into dust. Qin Bai's eyes were open wide. He looked at his chest, which was bleeding profusely. He only now realized what had happened. He felt pain and said, Ow! It is hurting like hell. Qin Bai had never felt pain this severe before. It made his eyes bring on the waterworks, which also made his nose snotty. Thousand Mile Reach summoned a healing power gene raised to heal Qin Bai. Mr. Crown Prince, it is only a small wound. There is no need for you to shout this much. Hansen squatted down next to Qin Bai and heartily laughed. You are not the one who is hurting, so, of course, you don't feel hurt. Qin Bai responded through the wails and tears. Hansen laughed, but did not reply. The wounds he had incurred were far worse than the likes Bai Qin had ever seen before. These wounds were nothing. Hansen could not tell Bao Qin something like that. He smiled at him and said, Right, if it was me, I would not touch the swords randomly either. I would not go and collect any without first getting a gene race. Mr. Crown Prince, you are way too brave. You. You. You are saying things to mock me, Qin Bai madly said. Hansen laughed. Bauer added, You are brave, but you are also weak. You cannot even conquer a sword. You are a weak ass. Who said I cannot do it? I just missed. That's all. Qin Bai was annoyed as he spoke. He wanted to get angry, but it was Bauer who was talking. So he made himself sound weaker again. You missed, huh? In that case, pick up a few more and let me see your true might. Bauer looked at Qin Bai with interest. Qin Bai was a little bit scared, but he liked having a bit of a reputation. Thus he shouted, I am not afraid of you. Bauer would not let him go. She laughed and said, Sure. In that case, you go right ahead and pick another one up. I bet you will end up peeing your pants. The wounds on Qin Bai's body had already been healed by Thousand Mile Reach. Hearing Bao say what she did, Qin Bai could not help but say, Oomph, watch your tongue. Bauer, I'm going to show you how I pick one up. Thousand Mile Reach looked at Hansen, hoping he would stop this contest. Hansen behaved as if nothing was going on. He was merely talking with Jian Bugu. Qin Bai said he was so powerful, but he did not move his feet. He peered at Hansen with a beggar-like look. He quickly noticed that Hansen was not even looking at him. He was just talking to Jian Bugu. What is it? Do you really not dare to try? Bauer asked as she lifted her lips. There is nothing I would not dare to do, Qin Bai said. He gnashed his teeth and started looking around. He went off in the direction of a little stick. It was bronze and looked very small and thin. Because of what happened last time, Qin Bai did not go and select a weapon that looked so mighty. That bronze stick looked safer. He wagered the damage it might deal would not be so high. After what happened last time, 
Qin Bai summoned the strongest gene rays he had at first. After he combined with it, he went to the bronze stick. He had a lot of god-class gene races to combine with, but his power was limited. Since he had always skimped on his practices, he could only combine with one gene race. He could not combine with many. He carefully walked to the bronze stick. He cautiously generated the power of the gene race and enabled the gold light to protect his body and hands. Qin Bai then used power to pull. He pulled out the bronze stick, but his hands were trembling. It was like the blade was trying to struggle to break free from his hands. Qin Bai held it tight as he shouted, You are mine. The bronze stick was incapable of escaping. It eventually decided to self-destruct. Its power was not as strong as the gene race Qin Bai had, but the explosion released a strong power that blew Qin Bai backward and onto the ground. He was not injured, but his hands felt numb. You are too weak, Bawa said with a shake of her head and a lengthy sigh. You cannot even conquer a short, broken, bronze stick. Qin Bai's face turned red. He did not say a word. He climbed to his feet and marched straight toward another weapon. He noticed that with the protection of a god-class gene race, the weapons were not all that scary. They just made him hurt a little. He was able to endure the pain. Qin Bai's luck was not so fortunate. He pulled out seven weapons. None of them approved him to be their master. They all self-destructed. It was lucky he was Qin Bai, the crown prince of the Qin kingdom. He had gene races with immense power. The explosions of normal weapons could not hurt him. Eventually, hits like these stacked up. Qin Bai was no longer able to accept them. He felt very depressed and thought Bauer managed to easily pull them out. So many emerald short swords approved her. I have pulled out so many, so why have I yet found one that approves me? Am I really that useless? Hansen, am I really useless? Why do the weapons not approve of me as their master? Qin Bai started to doubt his life. Thousand Mile Reach and Jia Shirjin both sighed. The heart of an item was like the heart of a person. Qin Bai always loved to goof around, so he had yet to be stabilized. There was no way the weapons were going to approve of them. Hansen laughed. Crown Prince, you just haven't found a way to use them correctly yet. If you use the right method, getting the approval of one of those weapons is not difficult. Qin Bai's face turned bright as he said, I see. What kind of method do you need? Bauer, give your wooden sword to the crown prince to use, Hansen said to Bauer. Bauer drew the small wooden sword and passed it to Qin Bai. Hansen then said, hold this sword and try to pull out the weapon from that side. Qin Bai was feeling rather hopeful as he held the wooden sword. He walked to the weapon Hansen had pointed at. It was another diamond greatsword. Can I really do this? Qin Bai did not believe it. He looked at Hansen. Why not just give it a go? Hansen asked with a smile. Qin Bai gnashed his teeth. He used Qin Rei's power to protect his body. He grabbed the great sword and gave it a big yank. The diamond great sword was pulled free. This time, the diamond great sword did not attack him. He managed to hold it flawlessly. It released a god light. It made Qin Bai very shocked and happy. I really did it. Chapter 3197 Method Hansen, why is it like this? Why am I now able to grab the diamond great sword with the wooden sword in my hand? Why did it approve of me? Qin Bai looked at Hansen with confusion. There is a solution to everything in this world. It all depends on whether or not your solution is the correct one. This small, wooden sword is one such method, but it can only help you claim an ordinary weapon. Hansen was not going to tell him that the small wooden sword's sword mind was equal to Jian Bu Gu's. There would not be a sword that did not approve of Jian Bu Gu's sword. It is no wonder why Bauer could conquer so many emerald short swords. Qin Bai exclaimed with shock. Hansen was not going to tell him that Bauer had not used the short wooden sword. She did not need the wooden sword to do what she did. I want to conquer the other weapons, so what will I have to do to get those? Qin Bai asked with curiosity. Is there a small wooden knife and a small wooden spear? Hansen smiled and said, The way to sort this out is not just using a small wooden sword. If you can find the right solution, you can conquer any weapon. You can return the small wooden sword to Bauer now. Qin Bai returned the small wooden sword to Bauer. The weapons there were different from people. They did not think much. If the diamond great sword had already been conquered, even if there was no small wooden sword, it would not leave him. Hansen looked around. He looked at a knife and pointed it out to Qin Bai. He said, try and pick up that knife. Do I just walk there and pick it up? Don't I need to ready myself in some way? 
Chin Bai asked as he peered at the knife. It was a beautiful, long knife with a scabbard. The scabbard and handle were encrusted with gems. It seemed to be brightly twinkling. It was very shiny. Nope, Hansen said with certainty. You don't need anything. You just need to go over there and pick it up. I promise you it will obey you. Really? Chin Bai did not believe him. Just try it. Are you going to learn the truth or chicken out? Hansen smiled. Jia Shirjin and Thousand Mile Reach were curious and looked at the knife. They guessed what Hansen was trying to do, but they did not believe he was that smart. Jin Bugu smiled but did not speak. He quietly watched what was happening. Chin Bai was easily provoked, so he ran over and tried to pick up the knife. Chin Bai had merely touched the handle when a will came surging out of the knife. It seemed like it was dying to enter his arm. It was easily picked up without any resistance. Seeing the knife happily circle Chin Bai in flight, it adhered to Chin Bai's own actions by jumping. It was not just Chin Bai who was surprised. Thousand Mile Reach and Jia Shirjin were shocked too. They understood something. They looked at Hansen with admiration. Hansen, why is it like this? Chin Bai curiously asked. Hansen replied, Didn't I tell you there is always a solution to figuring things out? It all depends on whether or not you can use those methods. The weapons did not approve of you because you did not know yourself or understand them. You approached them in the wrong way, which is why you failed. What is that supposed to mean? Chin Bai did not understand. To sort out these problems, you must first understand the type of problem you have, Hansen said. Your problem lies in your will not being able to match the will of the weapons. That was why they did not obey you. Your will matches with this knife's will. Thus, when you tried to draw it, the knife was willing to follow you. I see. In that case, how am I supposed to find out which knife has a will that is similar to mine? Chin Bai looked at Hansen with interest. He wanted to use his own power to discern which weapons to select. You will have to use a weapon-watching skill, Hansen said with a smile. Thousand Mile Reach is an expert with this. You should probably ask her. I would not dare. I am much worse than you, Mr. Han. Thousand Mile Reach spoke honesty. He would not try to lick his boots. The weapons were asleep, so the presence of their will was at a minimum. Thousand Mile Reach could not find a suitable weapon for Chin Bai to select based solely on gauging their appearances. Thousand Mile Reach, you should stop being so humble, Chin Bai said with great interest. Just tell me which it is. Thousand Mile Reach felt touched. He had taught Chin Bai for many years, and this was the first time he had ever seen Chin Bai want to learn something. He really admired Hansen. Jia Shirjin strangely looked at Han Senator. She was shocked by Han Sen's knowledge, power, and patience. It was no wonder he was able to teach Chin by a sword mind in such a short amount of time. Jia Shirjin thought, it is no wonder why Mr. Jian is so willing to follow him. Hansen is very peculiar. Thousand Mile Reach kept walking, explaining the foundation of weapon watching skills to Chin Bai. Chin Bai listened very intently and kept on asking questions. He asked about many things. Before this day, it would have been an impossible concept for him to fathom. In the past, when Chin Bai had his lessons, he felt as if he was in pain all the time. He felt as if he was locked up in prison. He only answered things when he was asked for. He was like a robot that did not learn much. He would never actively seek things out to learn. Hansen really to teach Chin Bai. After all, this was the boy who had become his friend after he arrived in the universe of kingdoms. Hansen would have liked to help him in any way he could. He did not want to watch him fail as a king and end up destroying the Qin kingdom. If one took things from a serious perspective, Qin Bai was an heir of Qin Xiao. Han Sen's body had some of Qin Xiao's blood in it. In some way, they were related by blood. But outsiders could not really help much. If Qin Bai wanted to become a king, then it was good. It all depended on whether or not he could be awakened. Mr. Jian, where is Soldier Knife Sky's God Temple? Hansen took a walk with Jian Bugu who had been at the back of the group. Go in that direction. Within 3,000 miles, you should be able to SB the presence of that god temple. Jian Bugu looked ahead. He appeared as if he was longing for something as he said, I wonder if the sword is still there. What sword? Hansen asked with curiosity. There is a sword a mile from here, Jian Bugu said. Back in the day, I was there when I was almost beaten. In the end, I was unable to draw it. After all these years, I do not know if it is still there or not. If you were almost beaten by that sword, Mr. Jian, I bet it must be a magical item. Why don't you lead us there to take a look? Hansen was interested in the sword. 
Thousand Mile Reach and Jia Shuzhen were of a similar mind. Qin Bai showed excitement too. He wanted to try the watching weapon skill he had just learned. Jin Bugu pointed in a certain direction, so the group traveled that way. There was not a single human scene. Aside from weapons, it was as if there was nothing else there. Boom. After walking for almost 10 miles, an explosion came from the sky. The wind suddenly changed. The sky looked dark. It looked like a storm was rolling in. Chapter 3198 One Sword A bolt of lightning struck through the air. It looked like the sky and the earth were torn in two. All the weapons in the sky were like storms. They had the power to destroy the sky and the earth. Suddenly, they all started to rain down. Chin Bai was so shocked that he screamed. He held his head and hid behind Thousand Mile Reach. Thousand Mile Reach developed a wry smile. He did not generate a power to defend them from the weapon rain that could destroy the sky and the earth. In the next second, the rain of weapons started to hit the ground. They pierced through their bodies, but they did not get hurt. It was like a sky full of screams, explosions, cries, and wails. It created a symphony from hell. Hansen and the others saw that the area around them was like a Shura battleground. Countless life forces were killed by the scary weapons. The sky and the earth had been broken by the weapons. The mountains and rivers were cut flat. The life forces dried up, and blood flowed in the river. The sky and the earth were in chaos. The legends claim that the soldier knife sky used to be an old arena, Thousand Mile Reach said. There was an old god that came to this place to reveal his power. He killed many creatures that dared to disrespect God's spirits. He destroyed the sky and the earth. Because he was so horrible, some marks persist in the air as scars. They still exist now, even after all that time. So, whenever it rains, this is the sort of scene that is witnessed. Although he knew it was just a fable, the scene that destroyed the sky and the earth was very scary. There were certainly gods involved. People knew it was just an illusion, but their hearts still felt scorned. It was pointless for Chin by to hide behind Thousand Mile Reach. The impact on his heart was something he alone had to absorb. Chin Bai looked bad. He almost coughed up blood. He did not expect to see a scene that could break someone's mind like that. He held his head and cried, Hansen save me. Hansen sighed and said, Mr. Crown Prince, there are things other people cannot help you with. You must face these alone. I have a skill here. If you copy it, you should feel better. After Hansen said that, he read a skill to Chin Bai that could soothe his mind. His voice was not too strong but it was able to be heard over the battleground and other somber acoustics. His voice went into Chin Bai's ear, enabling him to hear it all. Chin Bai held his head and shouted, I feel terrible. How am I supposed to learn anything like this? Hurry up and find a way. Before reading it out again, Hansen said, because it is this hard for you to endure, that is why you must learn. You need to learn this to accept it. Aside from that, no one can help you. I believe you can do this. Chin Bai's leg shook. His face went pale. He felt as if the blood in his chest was madly rumbling. He was only able to focus on his heart. He gritted his teeth and tried to remember what Hansen had said. He used the method to soothe his mind and fight against the terribly powerful impact that was damaging the sky and the earth. Chin Bai was not dumb. In fact, he was very smart. Since he always wanted to play, he never bothered to learn much. Now that he had no choice, he learned really fast. He managed to learn some good things in a short amount of time. Although he still couldn't fight against a god in an illusion, he still felt much better. He had tasted something sweet. Now, Chin Bai was doing everything in adherence to what Hansen had told him. Not long later, the illusion was gone. Chin Bai's shaking legs went soft. He dropped to the ground in a sitting position. Hansen, your skill works, but it is not too useful. Is there another one? Chin Bai complained. No, Hansen said with a smile. If you think it is useless, it is because you have only just learned it. In a while, it really will become useful. Mr. Han is correct, Thousand Mile Reach said. Mr. Crown Prince, you should practice it some more. In Soldier Knife Sky, there are always some old battle scenes. Sometimes, they can last hours. When Chin Bai heard that, his face turned bitter. If I knew that, I would not have come along. Hansen, you tricked me. Hansen loudly laughed. It is kind of difficult, but don't you also think it is rather interesting? You have always lived in the palace and never seen things like this. When you go back home, if the officers say you are ignorant and young, you can ask them if they have ever been to the soldier knife sky. After that, ask them who is more ignorant. 
When Chinbai heard that, his face turned bright. He was sick and tired of hearing people call him young and ignorant. Whenever he made a mistake or wanted to do something, the officers would tell Chin Jinjin. The word they most often used was ignorant. After hearing those two words, Chinbai felt like punching a wall. In its totality, what Han Sound had say made sense. Those officers eat wheel and wearing nice clothes at home all day, Chin Bai madly said. And me? I have been to this dangerous place. They would not dare to call me young or ignorant after these trials. Hansen knew no that matter how much Chin Bai went through, the officers would still call him ignorant and young. There was a difference between being really ignorant and not actually being ignorant. It was always good to experience something new. Hansen, hurry up and tell me more about the skill that I must practice. Chin Bai couldn't wait before asking for more. Although when Chin Bai did things, his interest did not last long in the soldier knife sky. He knew he absolutely had to. Otherwise, if this scene happened again, he would have to suffer again. In fact, most ordinary people were like Chin Bai. If they were not pushed into a corner, they would never notice the true strength they had inside them. This was why traveling was better than studying books. By studying books, one could get lazy. One could not be lazy on a trip. When one encountered trials and issues, one had no choice but to sort them out. If one did not overcome one's problems, the punishment would quickly ensue. Hansen kept slowly teaching the skill to Chin Bai. The skill was not a Geno art. It was just a skill to reinforce one's mind. It could work in any world. Chin Bai tried his hardest to learn at this time. Thousand Mile Reach and Jia Shurjan nodded. They thought the king had made the right choice. If Chin Bai had not been given the chance to experience all this, he would have never become someone mature and suited to the palace. He was not like ordinary princes. He was the king's only son. Qin Jinjin only had him for a son. There was no pressure, so the whole palace favored him. He had never been tricked, so his development had been slow. They admired Hansen, too. No matter if it was the weapon-watching skill or teaching Qin by the god-staring skill now, it was all so weird. As they listened to him speak, they learned it, too. Jia Shurjin weirdly looked at Hansen and thought, Who is this person? What he has learned is like a sky man. They had walked a hundred miles when Jian Bugu pointed forward and said, The sword I recall is over there. I cannot believe it is still around. Everyone looked to where his finger indicated. They saw an empty grove in the forest of sorts. Weapons were everywhere in that realm. For a few dozen miles, the place was empty. No other weapons were seen. Hansen glanced at the empty space. A sword was in the center of it. Chapter 3199 One Inch Thinking, Then One Inch Gray that sword did not appear to be very special. It was made of bronze and looked rather antique. It had no frills or special adornments. It was just a sword that had some interesting and old text scrawled across it. One inch thinking, then one inch gray. Hansen slowly read the words on the sword out. They were only a few words, but it enabled the people there to feel what it was like to miss someone profusely. Jian Bugu said, Yes, this is the sword. When I first encountered it, I thought it was just an obsessed type of a sword. After saying that, he saw Qin Bai stepping toward it. He swiftly stepped forward to prohibit Qin Bai's way. He casually said, This sword is different from the other swords of Soldier Knife Sky. This empty area is his. You cannot access it. Mister, what would happen if we did? Jia Shurjin politely asked. Jian Bu Gu's face usually looked calm. Now, he looked rather confused. He said, In fact, there aren't many big issues that can arise. Unless you absolutely have to, though. I suggest you do not enter. Would our lives be put in danger? Chin Bai asked. Ordinarily, there should not be a danger posed to your lives, Jian Bugu said. The sword will not harm anyone randomly. If you really want it, you can try to draw it. Perhaps you will be able to keep it. That is good. I want to see what sort of sword it is. Chin Bai's power had not reached that level yet, so he couldn't see. He felt terrible about it all. He heard Jian Bu Gu say there wasn't any danger, so he climbed toward the empty area. Thousand Mile Reach and Jia Shirjin knew what Jian Bu Gu had said meant something else, but Qin Bai was already on his way there. Therefore, they might as well have followed. Hansen and Bao followed too. Only Jian Bu Gu did not move. He still stood where he was in the forest of weapons. He watched them go forward and said to himself, although there is no danger to one's life, that sword is a real pain. It would be best not to provoke it. 
The few of them had only just been in the empty spot for a few steps when they suddenly heard a sword sound that was rather like an instrument. The acoustics were quite dreamy and unreal. When Thousand Mile Reach heard the sword sounds, he said to Chin Bai, Crown Prince, in the past, I always taught you how to find out the sounds of swords. Do you recognize what kind of sword this is? It should be metal, Chin Bai said, but he wasn't entirely sure. Not bad, Thousand Mile Reach said. That is a metal sword. To be a bit more specific, it is likely a bronze sword. Hearing the sword sound, you can tell the sword is around 4 feet long and has a thick body of around 1.5 inches. You can also tell the blade is at 30 degrees. Hansen admired that. Thousand Mile Reach really was the greatest teacher in the Qin Kingdom. He was very good at listening to swords. Although Hansen could do it too, he required the Dong Shen Sutra. This was Soldier Knife Sky. Without the restrictions of the universe's rules, Hansen could cast the Dong Shen Sutra with ease. He did not have to bother listening with his ears. Qin Bai could not wait to find out if Thousand Mile Reach was right. He hurried up and ran to where the sword's sound came from. For a god-class gene race combined human, 30 feet was nothing. In haste, Chin Bai was able to see the old bronze sword emblazoned with the words, one inch thinking, then one inch gray. Thousand mile reach is so powerful, Chin Bai said with shock. It is just as you said. It is just due to experience. Mr. Crown Prince only needs to see and hear more to become like me. Thousand Mile Reach used this opportunity to help Qin Bai learn more. Why is Mr. Jian not coming? Jia Shirjin was surprised to notice Jian Bugu was not going with him. Maybe he does not want to be involved in some kind of trouble. Hansen knew Jian Bugu had not gone with him, and he was able to guess why. Qin Bai had not noticed. He looked at the old, bronze sword and said, Thousand Mile Reach, with the sword skills you taught me, this sword seems fairly average. It only looks like an old, bronze sword that might be used for decoration. It looks old and powerful, but it does not look like it can be of much use. Is this really some kind of ultimate sword? Thousand Mile Reach replied, looking at sword skills is a very deep thing. You cannot judge it by its appearance. When you reach a certain level, if you can see a sword as a god, this sword looks fairly normal but exudes a scary god light. Chin Bai kept nodding. He looked hopeful and asked, according to what you can see, would the sword will of this weapon match mine? Mr. Crown Prince is a future king. Your mind is special. Ordinary weapons will not suit you. Thousand Mile Reach felt terrible to admit it, so he tried to cushion the disappointment as much as he could. Chin Bai's will was too weak. Not many weapons were able to match with him. It was even hard for Hansen to pick one. It would be hard to find another one that was as powerful. The chance of it approving Chin Bai was abysmally low. Although Thousand Mile Reach said it in a roundabout way, Chin Bai was not stupid. He was able to understand him and fairly disappointed as a result. Thousand Mile Reach, will you match with this sword? Chin Bai asked. Regarding that, I would have to give it a go. A god sword like this was not something Mr. Jin was able to take, so I do not think I can. Thousand Mile Reach said that, but he still had a budding hope. What if you did match with the sword? This was a sword Jin Bugu was unable to take. If he was able to tame it, that would be quite glorious. In that case, why don't you give it a go? Chin Bai could not take the sword, but he still wanted to see how amazing that sword was. Why don't we let Mr. Han try it first? Thousand Mile Reach politely offered. When Hansen heard him say that, he knew the teacher still wanted it. He smiled. Why don't you go first, Thousand Mile Reach? I don't use swords often anyway. Thousand Mile Reach offered it to Jia Shirjin, but she was indifferent. So, Thousand Mile Reach approached the sword. Although picking up a sword alone was risky, Jian Bugu said it would be a threat to one's life. Jian Bugu was not a liar, so Thousand Mile Reach was not so worried. If I really can get the sword's approval, Thousand Mile Reach blushed. He was very excited. Although he was excited, he was old and smart. Thousand Mile Reach would not dare be careless. He summoned four gene races and combined with them. He then touched the handle of the sword. Thousand Mile Reach's body glowed with a golden light. It was like the light of the sun and the moon. When his hands touched down on the sword, he wanted to pull it up. Han Sen and the others opened their eyes wide as they watched him. They were eager to see what was going to happen. Strangely, nothing did. It was not that nothing happened. Thousand Mile Reach let go of the handle, and the gene race was removed. He returned to his original self. He slowly turned around to look at them. 
Chapter 3200 The Style of That Sword Looking Back and Smiling by Mei Xing, The Sixth Palace Has No Color It was such a beautiful poem. The scene made people's hearts jump. Now, Thousand Mile Reach had an old face. With his white beard and hair, the expression he had made him appear exceptionally pretty when he looked back. They could see the corners of his eyes fly. His eyes looked as if they were hooking onto someone. They were so sensual but with an evil undertone. Hansen, Chin Bai, and the other people were given a chill. They all strangely watched the scene in front of them. That was especially true of Chin Bai. His impression of Thousand Mile Reach was that he was a little cold but a very righteous person. He was like an old bookworm. Chin Bai never dreamed he might have a face that could display emotions like this. It drove him insane. Seeing Thousand Mile Reach's intoxicated eyes follow the twist of his body as he turned around, he looked horny and slutty. That horniness was cheaply displayed. It was like a stereotypical example of whore. Hansen, Bauer, Chin Bai, and Jia Shurjian stood together. With their mouths agape, they watched Thousand Mile Reach twist his ridiculous body. It appeared he was dancing. If the dance was performed by a beautiful woman, everyone would have enjoyed it or had some thoughts that could not be described. But this was an old man twisting his hips as he danced. He was doing all kinds of sexy and seductive movements. He even put his legs out to stroke them. It was the sort of scene that made people freeze in place. A chill ran down Jia Shurjian's spine. Her stomach churned. She now understood why Jian Bugu looked so strange whenever he talked about the sword. Teacher Jian said he was beaten by this sword. Did he? As Jia Shurjian thought about this weird scene, it made her shiver. Han Sin was thinking the same thing. He wanted to know what it would be like if it was Jian Bugu dancing this way. In the next second, something even more shocking happened. Thousand Mile Reach kept dancing but started taking off his robes. He was like some stripper trying to tease the audience. He threw his robes at them. Han Sin and the others almost felt their jaws drop. They started to duck and dive. No one wanted to touch those ropes. Chin Bai looked very weird. He wanted to laugh, but he did not dare do so. His face was red. He was on the cusp of shouting, take it off. He was shocked and surprised. It was hard to remember that Thousand Mile Reach was the man who had been teaching him ever since he was a child. Now, he had been reduced to behaving like this. As he watched, Chin Bai looked delighted. How is Thousand Mile Reach going to act all high and mighty toward me in the future? Jia Shurjian forced herself not to laugh and looked at Han Sr. Mr. Han, what do we do now? Should we control Thousand Mile Reach first? Hansen looked at Thousand Mile Reach, who was dancing and taking his clothes off. He was silent a moment before replying, This sword is not mysterious or evil. It is like Mr. Jian said. It is not dangerous. I suppose we shouldn't do anything. We should not invoke the anger of that sword. If we do that, things might get worse. Jia Shurjian looked weird as she nodded. Yes, I supposed Mr. Jian was right. I just don't know how we are supposed to return Thousand Mile Reach to normal. While the two of them were talking, Thousand Mile Reach had already taken off all his clothes except for his white underwear. He had revealed his leathery, dried skin. He looked at Han Sin and the others. He put his foot on a stone and winked at his audience. He stroked his old legs seductively. It was a scene that made Han Sin and the others almost throw up. Suddenly, Thousand Mile Reach looked as if he was having a stroke. He instantly stopped where he was and did not move. His eyes made it look like he had been possessed. It was like the off switch had been flipped. Thousand Mile Reach's eyes looked bright. He looked at Han Sin and the others for a few seconds. He then let out a sob that could shock the sky. When they heard it, that crying made others want to cry. If a crying baby heard in the middle of the night, it would stop crying. A little while later, Thousand Mile Reach put his clothes back on. His old face still kept turning green and white. He just stood there. It was like he had received many hits to the face. Hansen and Jia Shurjian knew now was not the best time to talk to Thousand Mile Reach, so they did not even attempt to comfort him. If they comforted him now, it would be like throwing gasoline on an open bonfire. Cough. Cough. Teacher Jia, why don't you try and take the sword too? Hansen suggested. Chin Bai agreed. Yes. 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 Teacher Jia is so smart. You might gain the approval of the sword. Jia Shurjian looked at them both, trying to feign innocence. When she thought about doing the same things Thousand Mile Reach did, it made her blush. These two men are so evil. Jia Shurjian knew what the pair were thinking, but she didn't openly air her grievances. 
She pretended nothing happened. She looked at Han Sen and said, I and Thousand Mile Reach are too similar. If Thousand Mile Reach cannot succeed, then I cannot succeed either. But Mr. Han, you can teach Mr. Crown Prince a sword mind in just two days. Your sword mind level must be the highest here. I earnestly believe you have what it takes to claim the sword. Yes. 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 Chin Bai squealed in support. I think only you can claim that sword. Hansen felt conflicted. The sword was old. If he had seen it correctly, that sword had already broken the world. Otherwise, it would not have been able to affect Thousand Mile Reach so effectively and make him lose control of his body. He believed it would be great to have a sword like that. If he wanted to conquer a sword like that, he knew it was not going to be easy. Hansen thought, since I am here, I might as well give it a shot. Plus, there is no suppression in this part of the universe. No matter how strong it is, I should not end up losing control of myself. He nodded and said, Okay, I will give it a go. Mr. Han, be wary of the power the sword holds, Thousand Mile Reach said as he stood tall, frosty, and stiff. Ordinary material power does not work on it. Thank you, Teacher Thousand Mile Reach. Hansen was grateful for the reminder. Being able to shirk his shame and remind Hansen of that showed just how much of an honorable elder Thousand Mile Reach was. Hansen thought about the way Thousand Mile Reach had acted. The image he had built was quick to cave in on itself. He had to force his face not to crack. One inch thinking, then one inch gray. Was that poem born with the sword? Or was it added to the sword later? Hansen walked in front of the sword and thought about it. Soldier Knife Sky's weapons were made of two things. They were all half weapon and half gene race. It was normal for them to have words. They had seen many carvings and symbols across many of the weapons in that land. But those few words did not seem to match the feelings of the sword itself. It led Hansen to think maybe someone had engraved the words onto it. 